Amen. Well, it's great to see you all and all those watching online. We're in Lafayette, Louisiana, somewhere near the bayou, I'm sure, because I see all these French words everywhere. But it's great to be here. It's, uh, we've really been looking forward to coming uh, for a couple different reasons. Uh, but um, do we have, besides the people I'm going to introduce and they know who they are, do we have any other Warrior Fellowship host in the room, if you host a Warrior Fellowship? Okay, uh, where do you, where is your fellowship at? Covington. Covington. Does everybody know where that is? Yes. All right, wave your hand real big. We have a Warrior Fellowship in Covington, and that's where she is there. And then uh, if Shep and Rachel would come up here really quick, I'd appreciate it. Like really quick, because we're on live on the air all over the world. <laughs> really quick. <laughs> So all those who are watching online, this is Shep and Rachel Como. Did I say that right? Yes. And um, yes, amen. They, we were emailing back and forth because they, had, they, they are part of the people who started the Warrior Fellowship when we first began uh, a couple of years ago. So they've been doing a Warrior Fellowship ever since then. Well, she, they emailed me and they said, listen, we're feeling that the Lord is calling us to be a church. So that's the idea. For those who are watching, those of you here, we have these fellowships all over the world. And as they grow, like our church and other churches, as they grow, we just can't be in a house anymore. 
So then we have to move to a storefront. And uh, like our church, we have three storefronts ever since Kevin and Kathy came. Now we have three storefronts. It just keeps growing. But here's the point is that I said, listen, did you hear from God? They said, yes. So they are Warrior Fellowship of Lafayette. They're, they're a 501c3 church here in Lafayette. So, so listen, this is, uh, this is a big deal. This is, uh, uh, that's, that's, honestly, that's why Kevin and Kathy are here. Uh, because of this wonderful couple right here, and we're, we hope to come back, of course, every so often. But I wanted you to meet them as well as this lady here. But uh, this is this is growing into a church. So I know many of you signed up. So if you're looking for a place to have a fellowship, and I'm sure you get you're going to give them the information. Plug in. Let's do this together. Let's 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 reach Lafayette for the Lord. Let's start a food pantry and outreach and homeless ministry. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. So if you live anywhere in this area and, you know, you're watching on TV, for some reason you're not here, but you live in the area, this would be a good couple to plug in with. Let me mention a few other places where Kevin and Kathy and the team are going to be coming very soon. I was working uh, all uh, afternoon with Kevin and, and uh, our staff about new places uh, that just came, <laughs> came up today. Um, we're going to try to go to Puerto Rico this year. We're going to do everything we can to go to Puerto Rico to do, to do an outreach there. And uh, right now, we're going to be in Austin, Texas at the end of the month. And then next week, Kevin, uh, after that, excuse me, April 1st, Kevin will be in Tampa Bay for a one-nighter then at our church in Concord um, on Sunday night. And then we're going to, after that, it's going to be listed here in the next couple days. We're going to be going, for those who are watching online, we're going to be going to Virginia, Be Virginia Beach. And then the next day, we're going to be in uh, Hershey, Pennsylvania. And then the next day, we're going to be in Battle Creek, Michigan. So just be watching for that online. And then we're going to be in Scottsdale, Arizona in April, Seattle, Washington, Hawaii. <laughs> Listen, Hawaii is beautiful, but we have a real um, we have a real strong fellowship there that's growing growing in Maui like crazy and Honolulu, and we're really trying to reach uh, the the islands over there. Then we're going to be in Tulsa, Oklahoma, Branson, Missouri, uh, back again in Pennsylvania, Dallas, Fort Worth, Nashville, Tennessee. All these you can find on our event page. Waupon, Wisconsin, Dalton, Georgia. And then um, Kevin, the Lord spoke to Kevin, and it happened just like that. So I know it's a God thing because we've been doing this a while. It happened just like that. Sven helped and his friends, and, and right after we heard from Kevin in October, we're going to be headed to Germany, excuse me, Switzerland, and then we're going to uh, fly down to South Africa, and then we're going to come back up to Germany, and we're going to do spirit schools in each one of those places. And listen, I, we, uh, I know there's a lot of you watching maybe from uh, Africa and different places like that. And there's powerful, powerful fellowships in Africa, uh, in, in the bush. They're, I mean, powerful. Uh, they're doing a lot. But we just can't get to some of these places. And so if you're watching and you're in Africa, it would be good if we could see you in South Africa. Come on down if you can. Just find a way to come down to Cape Town. So that's where we're going to be because, you know, uh, there's fellowships everywhere. And unfortunately, Kevin's heart is, because um, I just talked to him about it, uh, he wants to go everywhere, but we can't go everywhere. So uh, it's good that if we're anywhere in your vicinity, it, it's good to try to try to make it and, and be a part of this. Like one more thing, like we were just in Kansas City two nights ago. And it was standing room only. It's our first time we've ever been there. There people, people were, were uh, I don't know, Kevin, if you were going to mention this, but people were. There was so full that people were in their cars watching on their phones in the parking lot of the hotel. Uh, and what I'm saying is that's the first time Kevin's ministry had been there, and it just exploded. But we don't know. We're going to try to go back next year. Anyway, I'm saying all this to everybody watching that you need to get to these meetings. They've been off the charts. We've been drunk in the spirit every night this, this week. It's been amazing. Amen? Well, we want to give everybody an opportunity to give in the offering and and because we believe that's a part of the uh, uh, kingdom principle is to sow in, in, in what God's doing. And, and we know that you, uh, you listen to Kevin, you watch Kevin, and, and this, this ministry is not about money, not about any of that. And I already know he's going to come back to Lafayette whether you give tonight or not. He's coming. And uh, so I'm sure the Lord already spoke to you in your heart about how, how and what to give, and we are thankful for that. 
Uh, and but we we were we came here just to uh, just to uh, make an impact in this area. Amen. And we're believing that you'll never be the same again. So if you want to give online, there should be a text to give number on there. But if our ushers would come. We're going to go ahead and pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity, Lord, to be here in Lafayette and Lord, and to hear the word of the Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that you are, Lord, going to bless this seed that is sown, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that, Lord, we count it. We literally count it a privilege to be able to give into good soil, Lord. And we thank you that this offering will be used to reach the nations of the world. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor Chris. Well, hello, Lafayette. We, we are excited to be here. And I, I'm back here at the table and just meeting so many of you. Um, I just feel the power of God. There's something special something is up tonight just like uh pastor ryan said every city we've been to we've been touched by god and there's such a, a hunger for god uh, again my name is pastor chris and i help out with the uh, warrior pantry and the warrior outreach it's always been kevin's and kathy's heart to come into a city and have a warrior fellowship but also to reach the lost amen anybody like to reach the lost yes. all right now how we reach the lost is there's all kind of ways we reach the lost, but we want to go uh, to our workplaces, our family, the homeless. Uh, we also have a warrior fellowship in Concord, North Carolina. One of the things that we do, and I'd love to share it uh, on Friday nights, we have this wagon and we get these hot dogs and chili and we put them in uh, aluminum foil, we put them in coolers and we put blankets and hand warmers and beanies and socks and all kind of things. Uh, we make Ziploc bags with uh, little snacks and water, and we put in this wagon. We go to a homeless area, and we just begin to pull this wagon all through the area. And these homeless people would come up, and they say, what are you doing? And we're like, we're just sharing the love of God, and how would you like a, a, a warm hot dog? And they're like, yes, please. And they say, well, what's in the wagon? And we say, well, we have blankets. We have sleeping bags. We have hand warmers. Uh, what, what do you need? And, and they begin to get socks and things like that. And they're so touched by that. It's just a tool that the Holy Spirit uses. And then it opens the door, right, for you to pray with them, to minister to them. And the stories I've heard, they'll break your heart. But there's, you know, life has been tough. But you begin to pray for these people and God touches them. And you see that just the change. And that's what it's all about, right? Making disciples. But all it is is sharing uh, a warm meal or, or just a, a blanket something like that so we want to encourage you uh, at your for you to get a pantry get a shelf and if everybody in this room when they went to the the grocery store right if they just got an extra bag of green beans that there's like 70 people here that's 70 extra cans of green beans um, or spaghetti things like that that you can give uh, to people and we we really our heart is really to help single moms single dads I guarantee you everybody in this room you know somebody that's going through a tough time right now, right? With uh, the economy and everything, those are the ones we're after. And I just want to encourage you. I said this a couple conferences back. Uh, the Lord dropped in my heart one day. Could you imagine going to Walmart and you're at the checkout, right? And you see a mom and her little kids, and she's, you could tell she's definitely a single mom. She has a cart full of groceries. She goes up to the, to the uh, cash register and you say, ma'am, I just want to let you know that Jesus loves you. You have all these kids, you're doing an amazing job, and I just want to pay for your groceries tonight. Could you imagine the impact that would have on a single mom and those kids? Those are the kind of things we want to do. Uh, like Pastor Ryan said, you can reach the homeless. We, um, you know, nursing home, there's so many things that we can do. Kids, uh, the way we get the kids involved, they help make the little homeless packets, and then they can paint rocks with scripture. There's so many things we can do, uh, but the biggest thing is just to get started, to get motivated, all right? Amen. Pastor Mike. <laughs> All right. Well, I got to grab my homeschool kit. Do you like how I did that? So I am so excited to be with you guys. Thank you, Pastor Chris, because those are heavy. How many of you remember carrying your books in school, right? Yeah, that wasn't always the funnest, but you got strong from it, right? Well, we're so excited to be with you guys. I know we have such wonderful students and partners and friends of the ministry here. So we're so honored that you guys came to spend time with us tonight. We are believing for an impartation. Like 
this week has already been mind-blowing, so I can't wait to see what God is going to do tonight. So I want you to open up your heart. I want you to be ready to receive because heaven has no restrictions. There's no limits with what God wants to do. And so it comes down to us receiving because heaven's giving it, right? But if we're not receiving it, it's not the sending problem. So let's have our hearts wide open tonight because God's going to move. And all you that are students, and actually let's take a look. How many partners and students do we have here tonight? Wonderful. Thank you guys for being here. We're so excited. You know, one of Kevin and Kathy's hearts is that we disciple the body and we disciple them correctly, right? There's all kinds of things out there, all kinds of teachings, but we need the truth. We need the purity of the gospel. We need the purity of what Jesus said and did. We need that flowing in our lives because that's where healing, that's where deliverance, that's where the power of God, that's where the gifts, it all flows from his heart, right? And so a lot of what Kevin and Kathy have in their heart is tools and resources for you guys because we know that uh, you're, sometimes you need equipping, but then in the equipping, you also need the resources. So Kevin is working day and night all the time to do everything he can. We, you students know this because there, there's no human that's ever put out as many college courses as he has in the amount of time he has. Um, but one of the things that's big on his heart is the kids. We've got to reach our kids. We've got to get them instilled in the identity of Jesus Christ because everything wants to market them a different way. And we need to keep them on track. How many are with me on that? All right, fantastic. So one of the key things that the Lord spoke to Kevin about was that we have to home, provide homeschooling. And so we've got some of the best educators we could find that have understand uh, Kevin's heart. They understand the word of God and they know how to bridge all this together. So right now I just have the second grade kit. Um, and I'm not going to go too much into it, but if you want to take a look, I'd encourage you. If you are a homeschool parent, you consider homeschooling. If you're a grandma, if you're a grandpa, and you know that your kids are interested in homeschooling, come take a look at this tonight. We'll have it on the back table for you. Thank you, Pastor yeah. Chris. But the whole beautiful thing is this. I have never seen anybody else that could actually teach you kingdom principles with the love of God in math and in phonics and all the things. And they actually went through all the states, found all the standards, and then we went above it because we want your kids to be the best. Do you guys want your kids to be the best? I know you do. So I would encourage you to take a look at that. If you're new to homeschooling, do we have the whole network of homeschoolers in Warrior Chat? So we want to know that, we want to make sure that everybody knows that that's available. Now, with homeschooling, it flows right into the school, Warrior Notes School of Ministry. Now, I know we got a lot of students here that could tell us a lot. And by the way, Miss Rachel, she is one of our pioneer grads, which is pretty awesome. And listen, this was Kevin and Kathy's vision, is that we equip the body and that we see churches raised up all over, this, all over the world that have the pure gospel message and that are in it not for an organization, but they're in it to equip the body. Listen, I'm a pastor, Ryan's pastor, Kevin and Kathy have pastored, Chris is a pastor, all of us are pastoring people. We've been in ministry for years and years. And so when we have someone of the quality of this wonderful couple right here in this city that are actually alumni from Warrior Scoots Ministry, she's actually work, working on her bachelor's. She's going to be a doctor before you know it because that's the whole goal is that we can take you from wherever you're at whether you're a child in homeschool, whether you're a teenager that's getting ahead, or whether you are, have seen a lot of years and you want to get your degree. We just had a graduate, I believe she was 88, and she said, to, she, this is what she told me, she said, I never thought I'd get my degree and my family told me I was crazy. And then here she is walking across the stage getting her degree, and she said, I'm going, I'm going to become a doctor. And I said, oh yeah. You are going to become a doctor. She's like, my family thinks I'm crazy. I'm like, you're not crazy. You go, girl. You got this. You have got this. So listen, no matter what you have been through, no matter what, uh, you are, what's going on in your life, I want you to get plugged in with Warrior Notes. And it's because we've got all the tools, we've, we're providing resources so you can fulfill the call of God on your life. We have no other motive than that. And if you're in this local area, I'd really encourage you to sync up with this couple. We've got our other fellowship here too. Listen, we can do this. We can change the tide. 
We can win our kids back. We can win our nation back. We can see the power of God flow. But it comes down to a group of people that say me, that say now, and say yes. Yeah. Right? And how many of you are willing to say me, now, and yes? Yeah. All right? <laughs> Wonderful. Well, we're going to become family. You're going to be seeing us a lot. So I hope you get used to it. Get all your friends. Get your family because God's moving and he's moving through us. Amen? Yeah. All right. Dr. Kevin Zadai. Okay, now listen, the Lord has spoken to me. We're going to come back and do a spirit school here. Yeah, so, so that, that, means, that means we'll bring the simulators, we'll have the kids program, and um, we'll bring our pilots. And Sven, say hi. Sven is my pilot this week. And um, so we just brought one airplane, but we, have, we usually bring two. Um, and we want to start an airline, so we want to have, I think, we want to get enough airplanes to be able to go and get people and bring them to our. So once we get my staff here, then we would turn around with and go out to Colorado Springs, Albuquerque, and pick up people and bring them back. That's what I want to do. So um, please don't, if, you're, if you doubt, doubt, don't worry about it. You can actually tell, tell me that you doubt it's not going to affect me at all. So, but um, we're, we're going to, um, we're going to um, come here. And the Lord has spoken to me that this is one of these areas that he wants to move in. And he, he doesn't choose the big cities all the time. And uh, usually we have 1,000 people, like, well, like um, between 1,000 and 1,800 people show up. But what happened was, like Kansas City, the first time, um, it, was, it was packed. It was 500, almost 600 people, and there was you know, a lot of people in their cars lis listening on their phone in the parking lot. So... Um, the Lord chooses these places because of the people, because he cares about people. And if he can find somebody who's willing to, to do what he wants to do, which normally is the smaller cities, that's why you see revivals breaking out in different little cities that are hard to get to, is because those are the, the precious gold bars or those people there that will actually like obey God. Imagine that, you know. And um, so, um, yes, we will do, we'll work it into the schedule and we will be coming here, and so we're asking for everyone to help. I don't want you. I don't. I don't want your money. I'm not coming for your money. I'm coming for you, and I, I need people that are just going to love on each other, and and let's beat the living daylights out of the devil. Let's let's have a weekend where we are in the Word of God, and we just build up. We'll just build each other up, and then what we'll do is, um, you know, um, the Lord will provide the money, and and you will provide yourself. And let's just get out of this frame of mind that all ministers just want your money because, you know, I actually, I actually have to find places to put the money because um, the Lord is uh, like Moses. Moses said, please stop giving. We have too much. And it's the only place in the Bible. And, and I announced it um, in, in a couple different places in the last month. I said, please, I don't need your money. We have too much. And I'm the second person that's ever said that in history as a minister. So, but, <laughs> but um, we we believe in giving and we believe in receiving too as well. So, I'm teaching the body of Christ to receive. So we actually have reverse offerings, which we hand out money during the services, and um, that goes over really well. The not for the, <laughs> but not for the ministers, you know. But it does. It makes the ner ner ministers nervous because it kind of ruins the whole gig, you know. But. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm like you. I worked for a living for 30 years, and, um, you know, I know the gig. I know both sides of this whole thing. And so I'm going to flip some tables. You know, I'm going to flip some tables, and then I'm going to go to heaven, you know. So anyway, I love you all. Okay, so there are a couple of things that, are, uh, that, that I just want to share before we get into the Word of God. And I'm already, it's hard for me to even stand. The power of God is so strong. And, but I just don't like the fake, and I don't like sensationalism. And, and uh, I, what I love is fellowship and community. So the whole idea about what I'm doing is I'm not competing against churches because um, I feel that, that if people don't want to go to church or for whatever reason, which, you know, I don't even want to go to church in most churches because there's, it's, it's just like being in a refrigerator, you know, and it's, it's like stale food, you know, and it's cold. And everybody fights over the parking lot, the lot spots, you know. I mean, we haven't even gotten into the church yet, and you're already, like, fighting, you know. So I'm not, I'm not really, I'm into the church that the Lord instituted, you know, so however that happens. But to me, 
it's people getting together in agreement and um, you know that's that's the scripture you know that's how it was it was a house churches so when things go wrong in a government in a country it, it seems to revert back to the original way it was because James has had a church in Jerusalem but you know you don't go into Jerusalem and rent a building so I don't know how James did it but he was the big church and that's when Paul would go and get offerings he said you know pr pray about it and and collect the offering before I come so he, he was collecting offerings and taking it to the, to the head church. And I don't know which building was, was being used, but most other churches were house churches. Okay, so what happens is, is that there's different phases that happen in history. And, and because I, I spent all those years at universities getting degrees and everything, you know, what I learned was we don't learn from history. That's what I learned. I learned that we don't learn anything from history. So it's interesting how like we would have more faith in trying something again that's failed several times than just going and just re, just saying listen you know um, let's just stop trying to fix something let's just rebuild it right with a right foundation which is love. And so if you notice there's been an overemphasis of different doctrines in the Bible over these different years and I don't know if you've noticed, if you do any kind of reading, there's always a trend going on. So there's, gonna, there's trends going on right now, and people are already starting to get off again after this, the, 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 the disease of the week, you know, the Greek alphabet, all that stuff that just happened for three years. It was like a sideshow. It was like a carnival. And, and now it's all coming out, and we, we already, most of us know already what was really going on. But, you know, I don't, I don't trust anybody that shoots down a balloon with a million dollar missile when, when you can shoot it down with a BB gun, you know. <laughs> but it's what it is, it's just trying to make things sensational in order to create a need so that they can come in and be your hero. But they're creating scenarios. So there's waves of this thing happen. Now they wanted you to run on your bank, but you didn't do it. That was what just happened. See, they want to they want to they want to have an excuse to come in and and, and go digital. OK, so it's, it's going to be that way with everything. So there's these different areas. There's a there's a war brewing. So th that'll be coming out soon. So I'm just telling you, th this is a playbook that's been published for thousands of years. This is Satan's way of doing it. The whole idea is to unnerve you to gain control of you. But see, you are already in control if you have the Holy Spirit. Okay, so the Holy Spirit would want you to meet together because it was God's idea to have church. It was not God's idea that man would be the middleman. Jesus is the middleman. There's only one between God and man, and that's Jesus Christ. There's only one mediator, according to the Bible, there's only one mediator between God and man, and that is Jesus Christ. It, the Catholic Church is not on that list. See, and, and nobody's going to come into a Catholic state and talk like this. So God had to take me from Phoenix, Arizona. <laughs> Do you get it? And, have a re and, and, and be, be retired where it doesn't matter. You can take money from me. It won't even hurt me. You know, I'm just going to come in. I'm going to tell you, listen, there is, there is only one mediator between God and man. And Martin Luther, Martin Luther King said to the Catholic Church, you're not on that list. And he, he, you know what I mean? He announced that Christianity in the New Testament is that the Holy of Holies has been open. And now we have access through Jesus Christ. Right? Okay. So I just took out that devil. <laughs> but what happens is, is the Holy Spirit wants us all to meet together. Why? Because the whole idea is that we get into agreement so that anything we touch, anything we agree to, we can have it. I mean, according to Jesus, if you want to bring him into it. So Jesus said that when you gather together in my name, I will be there in the midst, which means he condones it. But he's also going to sign any document of anything you agree to. Because he also said two or more to gather together. If you agree is touching anything. You know what it says in the Greek? Anything. In Hebrew, anything. Homebrew, it says anything. It's anything without any restrictions. But we're not seeing any of that. 
But if we would all agree in this room is touching one thing, it would be done for us according to Scripture. I mean, the same Bible that you claimed as your manual, that is the truth. Okay, so Warrior Notes is all about just getting people together that are kind of like on the outskirts that are hurt, just like I am, just because I work for a living. And I didn't even, I'm, I'm just being honest with you, they're all watching all my, you know, you know the generals that are over me, you know, or above me, let's say. But the bottom line is I would leave my wallet at home. I, I would not go to church with my wallet because it kept wanting to move out of my pocket. <laughs> now, let's be honest, because I'm honest, that's why I'm still alive. It's because I just want the truth. The bottom line is I always felt like when I went to church that they wanted something from me. That I always felt like they were after something that I had. I didn't feel like people actually really were concerned with me. But what I would do is, even after I became a Christian, even though I went to church, I felt like the Bible study on Monday night, I felt like the people there actually cared about me. And I could sit and talk. I was a brand new Christian. I had a lot of uh, questions. And I was scared. You know, I just, I just, um, I had rejected my nomination to the Air Force Academy from Senator Hines. I mean, I, I was like, I was like walking away from everything. I knew I was supposed to, but I had no guidance. I had no church. I had no pastor. And so I got saved and I went to a church. But they weren't like, uh, they weren't concerned. My parents weren't concerned. They thought I'd join the cult because I got saved. So, I mean, I had nobody. See, I want to be there for people. So everything we do at Warrior Notes is based on what I would say would be the failure, the failure of the church. But not emphasizing that, just doing something about it. So that's, when I say what we're doing here, I want community in each city, in each country. And we have, you know, we have a couple of thousand churches just in the three years since we started this. I'm not even trying. All I'm doing is I'm not, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not going to fix the existing. What I'm going to do is help people. I'm going to provide for them. I'm going to go into a city find, and train up the, the, the students to be leaders. Then I'm going to issue them um, checks to pay for whatever they need to get, us, get it started. Then we're going to build pantries and we're going to hand out food. We're going to have activities every month. And we're going to get the kids involved. And then we're going to say, we got homeschooling. You know, you can get your schooling through us. You don't have to go to public school if you don't want to. And just create a community. Then, then all of you, um, then I can call you if I need an electrician instead of giving it to some guy that's full of the devil, you know. And I don't have to have, like, people working on my electricity, my plumbing, and my house. I, I, get, I keep it within the body of Christ. I feel like the money should stay within the Christian. So this was the idea with the Hebrew culture. It was called community, and they kept the money within, within themselves, within the group, instead of just giving it out to the world. So that's why I, I, I don't agree. I, I, I really don't think that people should have to go to a theater to watch a movie to get delivered. It's sad that, that it's come to that, where like the, the church should be the deliverance center. But the church should be having reverse offerings to where if anybody needs money that week, that they get it. With, so that the, there were offerings that the early church did that never left the building. That's what happened to Ananias and Sapphira. They were judged because that money was supposed to be placed in there and then dis redistributed among the poor within the church. There was offerings for different things. So it just, it's just conveniently certain things are disappearing from the church. And so then you have to watch a movie. You have to go to a college campus to feel God. This is not God's will even though it's God's will because he, he's doing that. But it, it is God's will that everyone should actively want to gather together and, and meet and build each other up and then find out what God's plan is for your city. And if it isn't this city, then you need to move. You need to move to the proper city you're at. Okay, so I want to explain because I'm, I'm, I'm new here and I, I'm not competing against anybody because what I found about the Christian cartel is 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 you have you have to pay to play and it's all it's there's a lot of competition 
And so I would rather, you know, so what we did is we started our own TV, our own publishing company, our own, we're starting our own um, airline. We're starting everything we own, everything, homes, own homeschool, own university, everything's accredited. Um, all of the pilots are captains. They have to be captains to fly our airplanes. Not, they have to be rated in the airplane. So everything is at this high standard. In order to, to show the world that we mean business, but we don't need you, you need us. Okay, but th this is the mentality that I believe Satan tries to steal from people. So why, why would I need, if I've got a high priest that his name is Jesus, why, why do I need to go to somebody if I already have access to the high priest? All I'm asking, I'm asking for a friend. His name is Jesus. He wants to know. Like, why he did all that on the cross, and yet we'll go to a man and depend upon a man, and we'll actually pay them to be over us in a church to hear from God for us and to make decisions and to pray for us. When, if you read the Bible, and I'm only saying this because I work hard just like you do, and I'm retired, and Kathy and I are, are retired. We're just doing this because we want to, but I don't even want to. I actually want to stay home. But the Lord sent me back. I had a legitimate experience where I met the Lord. But I saw, listen, all of us, all of us have gifts within us. And I saw that the Bible, um, I mean, I was a Bible teacher, even, I mean, even though I wasn't in the ministry. I, I taught Sunday school for the adult class. And I was faithful at that for years and years and years. But everywhere, every time I would teach, they would be lined outside that room. No one wanted to go to any of the other classes. But I was never allowed to preach. And I had been to heaven. My pastor didn't know it because I never told anybody except my wife. And so I would just faithfully teach that, that Sunday school every week. And people would just line up and they couldn't get in. So they'd stand out in the hallway. And you could see that something was going on with me. That, that the anointing, Hi, Kelly, how are you? Um, there, there's, um, there's an anointing on all of you. If you're operating that anointing, this is the kind of thing that will happen. What you're seeing at Warrior Notes is just the anointing. It's not me. I just have a yes about me. I don't have a no. My no, click, my no clicker thing is, is broken. <laughs> it's yes, yes, yes. But see, I, I got to come back and, and do this right this time. I, I, was a, I was really, I had been all the best schools. I had had Jesus appear to me a couple times, and I, I was sent back because I didn't do it right. I was asked to come back. And so I was sent back to do it right this time. So I'm going to do it right this time. I'm not back to prove anything about myself. I'm going to testify about Jesus Christ. And what Jesus wants is he wants people to be able to gather together and get built up to where they turn outward toward other people because they have so much um, within them to share that they want to start sharing. And so that's why we train people. And then, then God starts to, to uh, give you supernatural finances so that you can build a pantry and you can pay all your bills, and then you pay your neighbor's bills, and then you start to give out food. It's, it's, it's not like give to get. It's not, God's not a slot machine. I met him. He's not a slot machine, and he's not an ATM. I met him. He's a person that has feelings, and he, he gets hurt when we give to get. See, and you can see why, you know, I have to own everything myself, because I lose a lot of friends by talking like this. But there, there, there's a day where you're going to find this out. I wish it was tonight instead of when you get to heaven. Because God can prosper people, but what he, he's having a hard time. It's not the prosperity part of it. It's the trust. Can he trust you? Can he trust you with great riches? Because it has to be so that he can portion it out to, to where he has designated it. And that's what's hard about the rich man. The rich man could fix everything himself. He didn't need God. But what God wanted required of him was... Could he put himself in a position where it was real faith? And the answer is he could not. Jesus didn't need his money. He didn't even say, give it to my ministry. Like you hear every, you know, Jesus didn't go around, give it to my ministry, and then you'll have great rewards in heaven. But that's what everybody else says. And I've given money to those people too. And I've repented since then. <laughs> but Jesus didn't say that. Jesus didn't say that. Jesus said, sell everything you have, then give the money to the poor. So he had to get rid of his assets, which rich people don't do. Okay, then he had to take the money and give it to someone that couldn't pay him back, who wasn't part of the cartel. 
He had to go outside the cartel, had no assets, no favors from his buddies. It'll take you a little bit, but think about what's going on here. Jesus pulled the plug on the religious denomination of the day. He pulled the plug on them. He went out into the fields. He got kicked out. All right? So this whole thing down here is corrupt. But see, it, it started with Satan being cast down here, then deceiving Adam and Eve. Then he got the rights to the earth. So Paul said that he is the prince of the power of the air. He's the God of this world, small g, if you want to bring Ephesians into it. If you don't, then Colossians says it too. So you've got to cut out two books out of the Bible. But God is not in control of this world. He's in control of you if you let him. But he's not in control of this system. I mean, I know that Jesus could walk up his stairs of his airplane if he had one and not trip. And I know that Jesus could ride a bicycle. Okay, so what I'm saying, I'm making you laugh, but see what I'm saying is down here we have imperfect people, but we also have people that, that are excited to be evil. Okay, they are excited to deceive and to manipulate people. This, this is why I, I am doing what I'm doing. Every person, including Jesus, he came to give you back your voice. He, he came to save you, but he also, you were children of the Most High God. You were, you, were, you were in a world before it fell that was perfect. You were, you were sons and daughters of the Most High God. When you fell, you needed redeemed. Jesus did that. Okay, so now you're children, which means you are heirs of God, co-heirs with Jesus, which means that everything that Jesus got, I read this last night from Romans 8, and I can read it again if you don't believe it's there, but it actually says that, that we inherit who he is and what he has. Okay, if that's the case, I understand now why John said, you have the anointing of the Holy One inside you, a teacher. You don't need anyone to teach you. And of course we need teachers. You're here tonight to be taught. But what he's saying is, is there were false teachers who had come in and they weren't, they weren't discerning enough to know that that was not right, what was being said. And so what he was saying was, you have the anointing to be able to say that, and that ain't right. That ain't, that's not quite right, because the scriptures say this. That's what we're all about at Warrior Knows. I just want you to get a PhD in discernment. I just want you to, to I want to give you back your ability to make decisions for yourself and to have your voice back. If you look, the nation started with we the people. We the people. By the people. Okay, so what happened to all that? Because now we're being told what to do and not to do. Okay, so at what point does someone stand up as a group and say, you know, this has gone way too far. I mean, it's gone way too far. I can, I can name back where it started, you know. But, you know, that would be a whole three-week thing to go through all that. But what I'm telling you is, is that as the church, that the gates of hell cannot prevail against, that Jesus talked about, the church, the glorious church, that church is the church that can stand up and take authority and flip things. Okay? So what happened was, in the last, in the last so many years, all of us have been ministered to in our soul but they called it spirit. That's what I saw when I was in heaven. I saw that we were calling stuff that was happening on the earth as being spirit, and it didn't pass a test when you had to stand up against disease or bank failures, um, you know, all these different things that I can name, wars. But the church is supposed to be able to agree on anything and it shall be done. Now that's what I saw in heaven. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just lambasting you right off the bat because this is the problem I saw, is that God's plan for the church is clearly spelled out in the letters to, that Paul wrote to the churches. Okay, so Paul wrote those letters to the churches. They are hot. When you read them, it shows what all of us together are supposed to be doing. But there are no superheroes. There are no like ministers that are up above you because it, it got into this thing where it got back into that Pope mentality type thing, where you had to go to somebody to hear from God, so you had to have a prophet come. 
And, and the bottom line was, is that all of us have the Spirit of God, and we're all to be led by the Spirit of God. Well, to be led by the Spirit of God, you better be able to hear the Spirit of God as well as, as see Him, feel Him, and, and encounter Him in your, in your day. He should be in your finances. He should be in your health. He should be in your children. He should be in everything you do. If you can't take Him into these areas, it's not God, because God wants access to everything, and He wants to help you in every area of your life. When the so when I ch started, uh, started uh, studying history, church history, the more that I learned about church history, I, I, what I learned uh, just as a new Christian, I mean, I had only been a Christian less than a year when I went to Bible college. And so I didn't know much, but I, I, I was smart. I, I was smart enough to know that what I left to, to, in order to accept Christ, I did want to go back to that, to that old way and I saw the mistakes that were being made, that the churches were not, were not providing for the people. And I understand why, but I, when I went to heaven, what I saw is working behind the scenes all around every one of you. I, I haven't even shared half of it. Why? Because you think you can take it. I mean, down in New Orleans, New Orleans it's pretty, it's like uh, the voodoo capital of the world. I mean, there's, you know, the only thing is missing is brooms with, with people on them, you know, flying through the air. But, you know, the God sent me there. And I asked him, well, why did you send me there? He goes, because I trust you. But we have stuff happen. I mean, if you, if, if you knew what we have to deal with in our, I, you know, just living there. I mean, just so you know, the devil knows we're there, you know. But what I'm saying is, does God trust you where you're at? Have you built yourself up enough to where... Now you need to get together with others and build them up and then start a, a group of people to where you just agree and you start to shift the mindsets of people. Because it's, it's, you think it's spiritual warfare, but it, Paul said in, in 1 Corinthians 10, actually 2 Corinthians 10, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And anything that exalts itself above the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So he starts out talking about spiritual warfare, you, but if you keep reading, he, it ends up that we have to be hijacked in our minds in order to do what Satan wants. Because that's how much authority a man has on the earth or a woman. Yeah, you're going to have to think about that for a while. Because... A human being is higher than angels. The reason that we doesn't appear that we're higher than them now is because we fell. But through Jesus Christ, if you read Hebrews, it talks about the fact that we are actually placed above angels and that the angels will actually serve us. But right now it doesn't appear that way because they have really cool bodies and they don't even need wings to fly. And they can, they can go back and forth and do things. And you're just standing there still waiting in line for your Chick-fil-A. And they've already gone back in time and forward and back in time. They've gone the speed of light. And at the speed of light, an angel can travel eight times around the earth. So the speed of light, you can travel around the earth eight times in one second. And they've traveled faster than the speed of light because they can actually arrive at a place before they left. <laughs> because the spirit, in the spirit realm, there is no limitation. So Jesus told me this. He said, Kevin, I could come and visit you and leave and, and take you somewhere because he's done that and bring me back and I can bring you back five minutes before I picked you up. And you would have to watch the whole five minutes play out again. And that has actually happened. But he can, in, in that time, because that, he can visit all of you, and he can sit with you, and you can write a book about it. And when you find out, he had visited all of us at the same time. But it hadn't been exactly at the same time, because he jimmied with it. I'm serious. I'm I know you're laughing, but I'm totally serious. This is the kind of, of realm that we're dealing with, the supernatural realm. But down here, we're just trying to survive. We just want to pay our bills we just want to do whatever we can do to survive another day, getting ready for the next disease of the week, you know, and is it going to be cow, llama, what's it going to be next time, you know, <laughs> you, do you, what country is it coming from, you know, and, and you know, you got to be kidding me. 
We have, we have satellites. We, I mean, some of the things that I was connected with, there, there's photos from space of, of, of license plates that were taken from space uh, that the people they were tracking. You know, they, um, they, they're, they're, the, the intelligence agencies, they know exactly the terrorist groups that meet and train. And, and, and even one individual, when I was, when it, when I was involved, they, there was one guy that had no hair at all. So he, his, his, his head would reflect from space. When he was there, they knew that there would be a terrorist act within the next month because they had all gathered there in this country to train. And they would go out there and do this thing. And sure enough, you know, they would then disperse and there would be a hit. And they were practicing it. Okay, so they knew when this guy showed up. This is from space. Okay, so a stray balloon doesn't come over the United States. This, this is a carnival. This is because there was a list that came out about a small island, and that list had presidents on it. Okay, that came out. It was released from a judge. It's on the Internet. It must be true, right? No, I'm just kidding. You know, okay, so... I'm just throwing these little things out because I can't do this because they'll, they'll just, you know, I want to stay alive. I know how they work. I know how this works. That little red light on that camera, as long as it stays on, we're good. But I only want men in white coming to get me. Angels, not men in black. Okay, so you have to play this right. You have to be smart. You have to read. You have to think for yourself. You have to pray in the Spirit and build yourself up and let the Holy Spirit show you the truth. Because guess what? He is the spirit of truth, and that's his gig. His gig is he knows truth, and he wants to get you to walk in it. He wants to talk to you. He wants to teach you. He wants you to make decisions based on the Holy Spirit. He wants you to be holy because he's the Holy Spirit. He wants to talk to you so that you can hear from God because he is God. He is the Holy Spirit. But the biggest thing, there's faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is faith, right? No. Well, you think so. No, think about it. I graduated. I got a degree in faith. <laughs> but you know what? After I got that degree, God prospered me. He blessed me at my job. Wasn't in the ministry. But you know what happened? One day, I couldn't go any further. And so I prayed a prayer of faith. But my prayer of faith was, help. <laughs> It's the only prayer I could pray. I'd come to the end of myself. I hadn't done anything wrong. I was in obedience. I was suffering. I was a flight attendant. I apologized for the weather and the fact that they got their wrong drink. So I apologized for the weather every day. I would, I would tell them, sorry, the airplane broke. And I would say, so I'm sorry that I gave you the wrong drink. And I did that every day for $64 an hour. That's a pretty good deal. Just take the blame. But then I started to feel like Jesus, you know, <laughs> taking on the punishment of everybody, you know. And so then I started thinking, you know, I could fix this airline only because I was there. And then and that's when the Lord started to show me is that a real leadership, a, a true leader listens to his people. Like, in other words, you tap in to everyone and you make it better because you have more eyes and ears. And that's what God did with the body of Christ. He, said, he made it so that, I mean, according to Paul, he said we're all locked together and that if one suffers, we all suffer. So we all need each other. He made it that way. So, so what I have, you need. What you have, I need. But see, what happens is if you, if you set yourself up, then you don't, you don't need those sheep. Well, I, I tell pastors, I tell ministers all the time, well, you know, you are a sheep too. They forget. They forget. They, they, they're, they're like not even human, you know. And so then ministers are trapped. They can't talk to anybody because they're superheroes. So that's why they fall. They fall because they get isolated and Satan takes advantage of them. But see, in a, in a, in a, perfect, in a perfect scenario what how God made it, the body of Christ, should be, we should be protecting each other. And we should be standing with the men and women of God that are, that are in the fivefold ministry. But see, they're at the end of the procession. I mean, your children will sit by Jesus at the Mary's Supper of the Lamb, and the ministers will be out in the parking lot. I'm serious. I, you, the people that get to sit with Jesus, the people that are honored in heaven, they're people you don't even know about. They're, 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 they're servants. They're the least. 
I mean, if you want to bring the Bible into it. I already received my reward. I literally, absolutely have already received my reward. And everybody, I mean, everybody thinks they want to see their mansion. I didn't, I didn't ask to see my mansion. I didn't see my mansion. I, I got to talk with Jesus for 45 minutes, and he said, well done. And I'm telling you, that's all you want to hear. You don't care about what you're going to drive up there, fly up there, where you're going to live. <laughs> Nothing else matters. The only thing that matters is that Jesus said, well done. Amen. And I got 45 minutes with him, and he talked about himself the whole time. I never got a word in edgewise. <laughs> he talked about himself, and it was all the red letters in the Bible. But I was a scholar, you know, I, was a, I, was a, uh, uh, I had all these degrees. But he said stuff and verses and chapters that he mentioned. I had to go back and look it up because I was so embarrassed. I, I realized I didn't know everything. But he, he would quote himself over and over again. And he would say, you know, I told Peter this. I told the crowd this. And he would say chapter and verse. I had to come back. Three weeks I was laid out in bed after the operation because they almost killed me. But they, when I read what, what Jesus quoted, it's embarrassing because, you know, I had four years of uh, undergraduate. Then I had graduate. And now I'm at a, at a job. And I didn't know certain verses were in the Bible. It's embarrassing which shows you that things can be slanted a certain way, you know, because you go to certain schools, they have a slant toward a certain things, you know, and certain people, that's all they talk about is one thing. But see, if you prosper and all you hear about is money, you can still die of a sickness because you didn't eat, you didn't eat the, the, the scriptures on healing and all the money in the world can't get you well. So you need a miracle in healing. So it's not good to just eat uh, just one thing. There's so much in the body of Christ uh, that has been given to us from the table of the Lord. And, and one of them is love. You know, one of them is receiving. You know, when you hear, that's why I wrote a whole book. I wrote a whole book on receiving. And the only book I wrote on finance, I called it Supernatural Finances. I didn't call it Prosperity. I called it Supernatural Finances because the book is about when you don't have nothing left and an angel shows up and does something for you. I mean, it's that type of thing. Like where God supernaturally does something for you. Like with Peter and throwing a line out and getting a coin out of a fish's mouth. You know, so I always go to Long John Silver's. You never know when you're going to get No, no. Okay, so this is, this, this is just... What I saw when I was, in, when it was there with the Lord was that he was going to send me back to tweak it, to tweak the direction at the end of the, of, the, of the ages. At the end of the age, he was going to send me to tweak, just bring us back to, to the scriptures, the basic, simple scriptures. So I, I, when I teach, I teach like I did in Sunday school, even though I knew the Greek and the Hebrew. It doesn't matter. I can't even speak English correctly. But, you know, and it doesn't matter like if I impress you with my knowledge. Jesus said it's what people walk away with understanding. It's not what you have in knowledge. So you can actually tell somebody to do something and they, they, don't, they can't do it. But they understood it when you said it. But then you put them in a cockpit and they can't do the first three things. But it's just like amazing. me and Sven, when we fly the Gulf Stream 4, you know, overseas and stuff, that is a huge airplane. But it's amazing. Like, like... When, when I started flying to get my rating, when we would land, I would land the airplane, and then I was the first officer, too, because he, we took turns landing. But then we take, when, we get, when we get on the ground, the first officer has his uh, duties, and then the captain has his duties. Even if the captain wasn't flying, he becomes the one in charge as soon as it touches the ground. And that's just the way it is, because a lot of the stuff that, that's needed on the ground is over on his side. So I was surprised when he said, okay, when you get on the ground, and Sven, Sven told me, and then um, the captain told me, okay, when you get on the ground, and I counted, there were 17 things I have to do from the time that he, we turn off the, the, the runway and we start the taxi, there's 17 things I have to do before he can stop and call for permission to taxi further. There's 17 switches I got to do. And so I started going through this, and, and they're helping me. I put my hands there, go, da, 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 da. and I'm like, but when he told me, I'm thinking, well, I can do that. It's just a flow, you know? And then you're like, and see, that's what happens with us as Christians. We think we can do it. But what happens is, is you feel overloaded because it's a war down here. 
And that's why we need each other. That's why we have mentorship. I mean, we're all captains, but, but Sven is still, he, even though he's, he's my pilot, he's also still my mentor. Because he's taking me, we're, we're going for ratings. I just flew at NASA, the F-104, which I went almost twice the speed of sound. And I, and I, I was in that, I was, it's amazing. Like we're, we're in books, I mean, all the numbers, like the numbers for that airplane, you, you, can't, you can't touch down on the runway at less than 200 miles an hour, or it'll flip over. You take off at 230 knots, not miles an hour. Okay, but our airplane, like today, I touched down out here at 108. I was in the pattern at 160, but in the pattern at NASA, I was 365. I was at the end of runway, I was at 550 miles an hour, having to pull the throttle back. Okay, but I'm going through all those numbers, and as soon as I'm done, when we, when we flew out, I got back into Phenom, and um, I go, oh, this is going to be easy. But see, the Phenom is actually pretty hard to fly, but it isn't anymore. But what happened, I was exposed to something even greater. So, like, yesterday, we were going through, I, I'm, I got to get a rating in a, in a fighter jet called the S211. That's coming up in May. I got to fly the Gulfstream 4. So he's got to fly the Gulfstream 650, which holds like a half a city on there, you know. But he's going to have to get his rating, um, his recurrent in that. So he's going through his flip cards, and um, I'm answering the radios because we're way up there just, you know, cruising. And I'm going through the, the Gulfstream 4, and I'm just laughing, thinking, we're always in the books. And then I find out, well, then I got to go for this rating. Now I got to flip up these cards and learn these numbers. And then, it, so we have like five or six, I mean, me, it's six aircraft because we're going to the Airbus 320 as well, getting our rating in that in December, both of us, which is, you know, what you all fly on when you go on Spirit or whatever. Okay, the thing of it is, is this, is you think that you're limited because you think that because you can't even remember the grocery list. <laughs> you think you're overloaded when they give you directions and the third thing is where you forget. It's like that fourth thing is really hard. But that's the way it is in an airplane. They, they'll start th throwing all these things at you and you gotta repeat them back and then do them at the same time. Well, that, it's that fourth thing where you're limited. So you have to learn to take four things. And then like today, I heard somebody, uh, a controller here, gave him direction, five different things to do. And that lady just routed it right off and I go, she did it. Because all pilots know that it's really hard to be able to take the instructions uh, and, and actually repeat them back and do them at the same time. And so it was like a big deal to, for somebody to rattle it off. And then, imagine that, it was a woman too, you know. She, she got it right, she, she nailed it. Okay, my, the, my point is this, I'm, I'm trying to show you that Jesus Christ has to be practical, he has to be applicable. Okay, but the thing of it is, is for him to be actual practical in your life, he has to mess your world up. I mean, it's gonna be supernatural. And I think that your mind is not, is not framed to receive the supernatural because it's not something that you have to do. You think it's something you have to do, but you can miss a meal. And I do it all the time. I miss a meal, and you know what happens? I fast, I pray. I've given all my money to the church or to a minister that was begging because he's going off the air or whatever. And you know what happened the next day? Nothing. <laughs> yeah, fast and pray, and you don't even feel God, and it, he didn't move. And yet you did that, but yet then all of a sudden, like, I, I remember, like he's telling me now, the, 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 he told me last week that the reason that this, this ministry is prospering, I mean, we're debt free and we're literally, we're, I mean, I'm not going to be bashful, we're looking for airplanes, we're looking for jets, and we have cash. But it's not a status thing, it's not because I'm a man of God, I'm not, I'm Kevin. What I'm saying is, is that we don't look to see what God wants to do through us, that he trusts us with. It's not us. We're not that good. What I'm trying to tell you is that the limitations will be taken off by the Spirit. The, the things that you are limiting yourself with is because you're afraid of failure. Because you've failed before. But what Jesus told me was that failure is a learning process. It's not bad when you fail. It just shows you what you need to improve in. So 
what I did was, when I went to church, I had been to heaven. My pastor didn't even know it. I wasn't allowed to touch the pulpit. I, was in, I worked in staff in churches, unpaid staff. I was never allowed to preach, and I'd been to heaven. So what happened was, is I felt sad that the Lord wouldn't let me write my book. So I went like 20-some years without writing the book. And I felt sad that I had so much to teach and offer people because I'm no different. Like right now, I'm no different than I was when this happened. I have not changed a bit, and that's a compliment. Okay, but the, the reason, the reason um, that the ministry is prospering is because what I did was I thought, well, they're giving me $600 to $1,000 per, per diem every, every month for, at Southwest, and I don't really need to spend all that because most of the uh, crew members would spend it on alcohol, which was very expensive, you know. But I would just go get a burger or a salad or something, and it would just cost me five bucks, and then I would keep, I was allowed to keep the rest of the money if I didn't spend it, and it was tax-free. So I would spend about $150 a month on food and then keep the other $850. And um, then the Lord said, well, why don't you start buying extra burgers and then on the way back give it out to the homeless? So that's what I did for, for all the years at Southwest. And then um, he, said, he said to me, he said, if you want to double down, he said, fast and hand, hand out the burgers, but fast that meal. And that's really hard because you got to double with cheese going out. And you, I said, I would have to go back to my room hungry. So this is how we got to where we're at now. Um, when I, then we were, we were, Kathy and I, we started prospering because we, we were big givers, but we were also good receivers. But we were giving to people that were, couldn't pay us back. So we weren't giving to the cartel necessarily. So, so you don't pay to play, but you, what you do is you give, when you give to the poor, it says you lend to the Lord. And he pays great dividends. I mean, that's, that's in the Bible. That's not quoted much because it, it kind of goes against the, the gig. But, but Solomon said it, you know, so I thought he was pretty wise. And um, so anyway, this thing, this thing that God is doing has to do with, with uh, putting yourself in a place with what you have and doubling down on, on everything you do and making it so that God has to get off his throne and do something for you to keep his word that it doesn't put any pressure on any of the people to give in the offering plate and so everything is funded by the lord here it really is so we have people that that literally pay for months like we're we in january we got a check that paid for every conference the gulf stream four both of our airplanes everything through hawaii in april all the conferences all the hotels, 50 employees, every, all the, all, all, everything is paid for. And this happens. Um, I've, we've never had that not happen. People fight to pay, but it's one person. They'll pay for everything. Okay, so these people do believe in prosperity, but they believe that God is using them. But there's no pressure. So that's why we're doing what we're doing is because God is financing it. But see, he wants you to be in the same place. You know, while, while I was doing this, I've wrote 60 books in the last five years. I've, I've done 129 courses. Right now I'm working on the master degree for everybody. But I've done 129 courses in three years, almost four years now. Okay, there, I don't have any time, but I still, I still went to work. I, I flew our airplane on charter so that, because it's expensive to have that airplane, so what we, I, the Lord told me to do is put it on charter at a charter company and everything was paid for for a whole year. That The plane literally didn't cost us anything for a whole year because people in the world were, were chartering it. And guess what? I was the first officer on that airplane. So they paid me to fly my own airplane. <laughs> okay, but what I'm trying to tell you is, is this is what you can do. Or I don't need to do that, but I got, I got free hours in my own airplane to become a captain. So when I got enough, I quit and I got my captain's rating. Okay, but this is what else I did. The Lord said, take every month your pay, your pay and give it to a single mom. So I did. So that's what's happening here. That's exactly what's happening here. So in, in May, I, 
I will get my first, first Social Security check. And the Lord's already told me, you will, you will sign that Social Security check every month to a single parent. I have to ask Kathy first, but I mean, I'm sure she's fine with it. But this is what I want to tell you. I'm not bragging about this because I don't, I don't really care. And, and we, already, you know, I, we, we already took the offering. It's not like this is an appeal. I need money now because you know, I'm just telling you, this is what you can do. What you do is you allow God to, become, to make you a distribution center. And it starts with a canned good to someone who doesn't have any food. You, you just help people who can't pay you back. And you love on people. Listen, people that are going through stuff, listen, you could say, because I've heard it all my life, I've been beat with that stick, that I didn't have enough faith. Okay, all right, yeah, all right, but God is love. So can I still come to him and say, Lord, I do believe, help my unbelief? Because I think that happened in the Bible. And I think if it's right, that guy got what he asked for. <laughs> Okay, that's the God, that's the Jesus I met. But the, the Jesus that I'm encountering in churches, some churches, is not the Jesus I met. So what's going on? I think that it's been hijacked. Okay, if you're on a hijacked plane, it's really messed up because most of the people don't know they're hijacked, okay? That's the big problem. Because if everybody knew they were hijacked, the hijacker would want off the airplane. And Muhammad Atta, was on our aircraft. He was a frequent flyer. When they went to his car, he had all the notes that he had flown us. And they actually switched to another airline because this is what it says. The passengers on Southwest Airlines are too unruly. We would not be able to take it over. <laughs> That's what it was saying. And he also said that there, were, there was not enough fuel on board to do damage. Okay, you listen to me? <laughs> so this is the, the message, and I'm going to pretend like I'm looking at my notes, but I, I wrote the, the notes, so I know the notes. But this is, this is the bottom line. This is what I know that I've never spoken before ever, but the Lord has asked me to say this tonight. When I was there in heaven, you got to understand, I left my body on the table. My, parts of my soul were stayed with that. There, there's a part that goes with you that you're still Kevin, you're still who you are, but the weird part of you, Lee, it, it stays here. Where it goes and works for the government, you know. Okay, the, there's parts of you that are not redeemed, okay? So there are parts of your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions that go with you. I was still Kevin, but I was in total uh, redemption mode. And um, I, I, was, I was, Jesus could handle me. He didn't do any eye rolls with me. He didn't like, hey, six feet, buddy, you know. <laughs> you, know you know what I mean? That, that, so there wasn't that, but I, I didn't lose my identity, but there was like the, 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 the weird stuff about humans um, wasn't there, okay? I, when, when I was there, I could see things and hear things and know things that I, I couldn't discern on the earth because there's so much chatter down here. So I went, do you mind if I like for 20 minutes talk about this? I've never talked about this before, ever. But I feel like this is where I'm supposed to talk about it. So there's a communication in the spirit, right? There's different ways that, that God can communicate to all of us, okay? Some of us have love languages, you know, but some of it's food, some of it's money, but these aren't real love languages. You know, these are just things in our soul that that we kind of like. We, some people like watches, some people like, you know, you, know you, you get it, right? But God's love language is, is the 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians. So if God is love, which he is, because it says he is, and he drives out fear, then if God is, pa so, so if love is patient, then if you, you can replace the word love with God's name. Because God, if he requires you to be patient, then he would have to be patient as well. So this is what I have done, and this is what I want to talk about, is that you've got to start seeing your Heavenly Father as being patient with you. That He's loving and kind, and that He does not keep records of wrongs, because He tells us that love, perfected in us, in, in the 13th chapter, does not keep records of wrongs. So why do we think that Jesus is keeping records of wrongs, or God? Okay, because it says that we've been cleansed, and that... In Romans 8, when I started in Tampa a week ago, that was my first message on this, this big run along, around the United States, is, is I said that the, the case against you is closed 
There is no accusing voice. That's, that's Romans 8, 1 in the Passion Translation, which is from the Aramaic. That the case against you is closed. There is no voice accusing you anymore. Okay, that's the truth. And then Paul, all through, all week, I've been talking about this. Okay, that is the absolute truth when I was there. Is Jesus does not have any record of anything that you have ever done wrong because your file doesn't exist. It's been cleansed. That's the absolute truth. I thought when I was there, how am I going to get people to get on that page? Because I saw how religion just kind of chalks us full. And then the demons are allowed to, they're just accommodated by the fact that they can harass you in your mind because you're not really sure, because you're, you're oscillating between two opinions. It's in, the, in Greek, it's the word meteorizing. So it's like an, an object that kind of floats back and forth. And so people are in and then they're out. Okay, so this is what I saw, is that people are halting they're, they're between two opinions. Instead of being fully convinced, you are forgiven of your sin, period. If you have, have repented, Jesus said, now, in keeping with that repentance, produce fruit. So produce fruit now in keeping with the repentance. So once you repent, I mean, I repent every day. That's why I'm still alive. But I produce fruit also in keeping with that repentance. In other words, my faith is based on what I do, not on what I believe. Because... If I do it, I believe it. So you don't do anything unless you believe it. So if you don't feel like you're supposed to give in the offering, then you don't do it. Because that's why people don't get a return. You, there's no way that you've gotten back what you've given. So how do you think that's working? How can that be? God can't be in debt to anyone. So. I'm talking about just getting back what you gave, not only the hundredfold, which is exponential, not multiplication. Exponential is 10 to the hundredth power. There is no way. You can't fit those around the, what, the return with the zeros. You've got to be kidding me. It's 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, that times 10, then that's by it. You, or you've got to be kidding me. It's, it's, it's astronomical. So the only way that it can be translated into this realm is you got to take it from that realm but it's faith expressing itself through love so if you have faith to move mountains you don't have love guess what you're nothing wait when do you hear that when do you hear that preached so you can negate your faith by not walking in love okay so god so loved the world that he gave his only son so Everything, everything in your life has to be an offering and an altar and a, a crucified life. Everything has to be. But that's not popular, and that doesn't sell books, and that doesn't bring in big offerings. And people don't want to come and listen about love. But the thing of it is, is God displayed his love. He, he didn't really talk about it. He displayed it by giving us his son. And the son actually obeyed God to the very end and didn't rescue himself when he could have. That's the whole idea of God's love toward us, is that he goes and takes a, a bad position and knows he's going to lose so that you can win. So he did that. Okay, that's already been done. So now, when you get what I just said, which I did, and I, I, I thank God it was before I died and, and not, didn't come back, is because now I know, I know that everything on this earth now is through grace, but it's through authority. It's through covenant. It's not my own ability. It's, it's, it's the fact that God already did this for me, and now I have to enforce it. And I was explained this, and I, I don't talk about this stuff, but I was explained that the armor is defensive except for the sword. So everything is defensive on you. And then Paul, it's really weird. He wasn't like into spiritual warfare like all of us are. The apostle Paul said, when you've done everything to stand, stand there for. And then he said, put on all this defensive armor. And then there's only one offensive armor, which is, or, you know, weapon, and that's a sword. When you've done everything to stand, stand there for. Well, what does that mean? I wanted to know. And when I was there, I saw it. He said, you've been given all things, and now you're just defending it. You don't have to acquire it. If you have it, you defend it. You don't need it. 
It's going to take you a minute, but I'm praying that the, the spirit of wisdom and revelation will come upon this room. Because you don't defend something if you don't have it. You only defend it if you have it. Okay, so everything is set up. I mean, if you want to bring Paul in. If you want to kick him out of the Bible, you're kicking out half the New Testament, more than half the New Testament. The, the armor is defensive. There's only one, and that's the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So the Word and the Spirit are the same. So you can't really separate them. And I don't know why anybody would want to. But obviously they have because you look at the condition of everybody. Is you got to have the fire and you've got to have the Word. You've got to have both. You've got to have the Spirit of resurrection and you've got to have the Word of God. You've got to have them both. But this is the point is, is that in these last days, when people start to realize that they have it, and that it's been stolen and kept from them, they start to stand up and fight. It's obvious because you've just let your government uh, rule you when it was we the people. And you sent people to represent you. You pay them to represent your agenda, not theirs. You sent them there to represent you. And you're supposed to fire them if they don't. And it was not to be life terms. It was to be a couple years... So Farmer John would do it, and then uh, Plumber jo Joe would do it. And it was, it was just, you know, it was people that would like, hey, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go down there and I'm going to tell them. And, um, you know, you, it's to protect and to serve. Protect and to serve. Protect and to serve you. It used to be on the police cars. And sometimes it still is, you know. Okay, what, it, what happens is, is people fall asleep you would rather pay somebody to govern, but they're governing you now. Come on, everybody's like looking at are you are you okay? Is this too much? Okay, because Jesus did the same thing in the spirit realm for us. He literally bought us, got it all back for us, and then sat down, which is a lot of confidence. Think about it. Jesus does all this, he goes and he sits. And now it says that he's waiting for his enemies to become the foot, his footstool. So he could put his hand. That's what kings would do. They would bring in the head of other kings that they had conquered. And the king would put his heel right on his head. And that's what is, Jesus is waiting for the church to do that. His enemies to become his footstool through the church. I mean, it's in the Bible. Okay, so this is the mentality of God. This is the mindset that needs to change in us. This is my sermon tonight. If you want me to pretend like I'm looking at my notes to make you feel better. But we're going we're gonna to look at this in Romans 8 because God, what God did for us was is that now we're to take our authority. Now, this is what's going to happen. And this is what I've seen in other countries, especially in other countries where people, uh, for, there's a whole bunch of dynamics that are going on. Each city's different here in this country. You're, you're different than where I just was, what? but you don't know it because you're here. And you've gotten used to your crazy friends. <laughs> but your crazy friends won't get along with the crazy friends in Kansas City. In other words, like there's all these dynamics that you don't know about, but I'm in a different city uh, every day. And you can tell, like every time we land, we, we just don't know what we're, we're going to get. It's like a box of chocolates, you know. <laughs> you, know you know what you're going to get, you know. I'm serious. There's one places where we have to park our own airplane. And get you know, and you know, there's other places where there's ten people wanting to help us. It's just the way it is. Each city has its own little thing going on. Okay, the the the, the idea here is in the end days that we're living in, that it would it would the, the glorious church without spot and wrinkle would, would come forth in the last days, and that everything that Jesus had done for by conquest, he's seated now. It's through the church. It's the fivefold ministry of the church is supposed to be building all of us up and preaching and, and building us up into what Paul said in chapter 4. It was unity of the faith and maturity. Okay, so that then the body could go out and be ambassadors and minister. That's what it says. So I'm not supposed to be going out and ministering. I'm supposed to be going out and ministering to you. Then you go to your workplace and minister. That was the plan from the beginning. So that's why we're doing what we're doing. Is so you can bring your friends to a Bible study. They won't go to church, but maybe they'll come and listen to a Bible study for 20 minutes. And so that's why we designed it. So it's not like something that, um, that's why we have hotels. We don't go to churches. 
Um, I, I, I have to, uh, we, we can't handle, churches can't handle a thousand people anyway. But we, we just rent these places. Uh, this is a small one in comparison. But um, God's called me to be here. But what I'm doing here is, is I'm building you up so that you can be activated to do what God's called you to do and prosper where you're at. And that means that you can buy food and that you can help people and, and, and minister to people because sometimes love is nonverbal. So what, I want, what, we, what we did was, Kathy and I, we would actually find ways we, to, to pay for people's food. We would sneak, um, we would pay for people behind us in the line at the drive through we would, we would start doing things, random acts of blessings, you know. And we would start to bless our pastor. We'd buy him new tires. We would, we would help um, pay for um, people's apartment. Uh, for the month, and we, we just, we would, um, yeah, just, so, so, you know, even now, you know, like even now, the, one of the most accurate prophets on the earth, he's been a pastor for 43 years in Atlanta, and he's not even known, but that he, he is my friend, but that man, when he says it, you might as well just go ahead and get ready for it. And he's the one that told me that I was going to get my headquarters, and we weren't even looking at the time. We were actually just renting a storage area, and it was Kathy and I. Kathy was the one that, that uh, I was the one that wrote the book. She packed them. She mailed them. Then she ran the book table while I preached, and I did the music. And then she went back to the book table and packed it up. And the packages were faster than Southwest Airlines, so they got there to our house before we did. And that's the way it was for a couple of years. And now things have, have changed. Okay, so all of you, that's what, that's what we're seeing. But, but, we, but that, that guy, uh, he told me, he called me. You know, I had walked away from the whole aviation thing. He said, you're going to get your jet in, in three weeks. I go, I'm not believing for a jet. So I, I actually had no faith for what I got. I had no faith. I, I, I wasn't confessing it. I wasn't giving in the offering for it. But my pastor... In 2000 and like, what well, was 9-11, so whenever that was, I was in, uh, my, my pastor prophesied to Kathy and I that our house would be paid off. Seven years later, somebody paid our house off, and then he said, you're going to get a jet, and I go, I don't want a jet. I want a guitar. I actually just want an electric guitar. <laughs> so I got both. Okay, what I'm trying to tell you is, is you can't focus, I, I'm here to tell you, is that some things are not faith. Some things is because God loves you. And he, and he just gets over you because you just turn yourself in. So that guy called me, and I met Sven a couple weeks later. And he sold me his airplane. Now, now, now he just stuck around. I mean, he came with the airplane, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what else does God want to do? Well, it has to do with other people. So what do you need? Well, what you need is a relationship with God. Okay, so you have position through Jesus Christ, right? So these are the things that are not being taught that I need to share with you tonight. Is I saw the positional through Jesus Christ, through the blood and what, what's been obtained, and that Jesus is seated. The only thing is, is position doesn't necessarily have application. It's kind of weird. Just think about it for a minute. My... Um, I had a position with Southwest Airlines, but Herb Kelleher didn't call me every night and ask me, are you okay? I know the passengers are probably hard on you today. You know, they, they didn't, um, he didn't check on me. Okay, so I had a position, but I didn't have any relationship. So really, I was a hireling. Okay, I was paid to do a job, and I did it. I did it really good. But when I did it really good, after a while they noticed it, and then so Herb gave me the President's Award, which is like the biggest deal. I'll get that later. The, <laughs> the President's Award, okay? Because all of a sudden, I got favor, but because in my position, I did, I did above and beyond. I, it's in Hebrews. Hebrews 6 says that you gotta believe that God exists, but that he is also a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So position would be he, you believe it exists, but relationship is that you would diligently seek him. 
it's inferred there that if you don't diligently seek him, you can't please him. You won't find him. He rewards those. You won't be rewarded. Because it says you have to diligently seek him. He rewards those who diligent. So if you're not diligent and you don't seek him, I would suspect that that's why a lot of people have a lot of questions right now. Is because there's not just position, which has been the emphasis of certain movements. So when's the word of love movement going to come? I mean, we, we've, we've given people hope. The denominations pat you on the back and we're, we're, we're praying for you. We understand what you're going through. And then there's the word of faith. It says, well, you've got to have faith. But there's no relationship. And then you, now, when's the word of love movement going to happen? Where, like, you know what? I got it. I mean, because this is what the Lord, he appears, he appears to me and says, I got it from here. So wh why don't we have that movement? Where he's got it. You stay home. I'm serious. He tells me at times, you've done all you can do. I'll take it from here. I've had angels appear to me and say that. But see, if I say that stuff, everybody thinks I'm weird. But yet, all of us would talk about what the devil said to us this week, what he's done to us. And I'm serious. You, I, I used to be a pastor, so I'd have to like hand people mics for testimony night. It's supposed to be like good stuff, you know. But then every time, man, every time, like... And I would cringe on Sunday nights, like we're going to have testimony time. And like, I wish the, 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 I would never wanted to be a lead pastor because he got shot at all the time. I, I want to be the assistant and hide behind him. So I was always assistant pastor. I didn't want to be the head honcho. <laughs> so I would, I, would tell, I, would, I would tell people, okay, uh, we're going to have testimony. So anybody that um, has something the Lord's done for them, come up. And every single time, the people would come up and they would start talking about, well, you know, the, you know this week my refrigerator quit. And then I had a flat tire, and then, you know, I went to work, and this happened. And, um, you know, I know the Lord's with me. I just can't feel him right now. <laughs> and they start crying, right? Okay. So after, like, three or four of these, you know, I mean, I have a responsibility. This thing's going down fast. I'm in the, I'm in the, <laughs> you know what I mean? At, at, like, at what point do we, like, do something about it, or it's going to be a smoking hole? You know, somebody's got to, like, step in and say, okay, I got the aircraft. I got, I got the service, you know. Okay, so this is the kind of thing is that when I talk to people, they, they, can't, they said, I can't hear God's voice and I don't know God's will. So those are, like, the main things I talk about because that's the big deal with everybody. They want to know God's will for their life and they want to be able to hear God's voice. And it, those, are, those are both valid. Okay, the thing that is, is that God's love language is love. <laughs> In other words, it's, he actually has full acceptance for you, and he wants to help you. He wants to come in, and he wants to show you that he had nothing to do with all the evil that happened to you. That's what I saw in heaven, is that all this stuff down here, God's getting blamed for, he has nothing to do with it. But he, he, he permits it because it's really been given to us the keys to, to trample on serpents and scorpions. And if people get in the way, oh well, you know. But... but but we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. Okay, so if you can see, I'm, I always bring in the scripture with everything I say because I want to show you how off we are. We should all have big churches that we can go to and do all this. It, this is, that was God's perfect will. But the thing that is, is at what point does somebody stand up and say, we got to do something about this? And so rather than just mock and make fun of everybody, I want to go and do it. I want to, I'll just, I'll build it and they will come, you know, and it will have nothing to do with baseball, but uh, all of us, all of us have gifts within us. Okay. So this is what I saw is a demonic does not want any of this to happen because they know if we are mature and we're built up and we're focusing on others instead of ourselves, they, they the demons can't work. So the best way to get delivered is not to be edible. So he seeks whom he may de devour, you know, if you just put hot sauce on you or something. In other words, you, you, you don't, you're not, you're not available, on, you're not on the menu. You have to get off the menu. So how you do that is you make a mark. But you don't make a mark the way that, that it appears to be. You don't have to be like a Hollywood status minister to be effective. 
You can get big that way, but are you effective? So the way that you get effective is you have to go from position to relationship. Okay, if you go to relationship, all hell will know it. And all hell will leave you alone. Now, now did you hear what I, I'm telling you the truth? The devil doesn't bother me. He bothers all of you to get here, but he doesn't stop me. I get, I, I get, I get, we get straight in. Like we've been getting straight ins. Like we're, we're like hundreds of miles away. And we're burning the, less, the least amount of fuel that anybody is up there because we get so favored. But see, he didn't stop me from getting here. Okay, it gets to the place where he can't stop you from getting here. He can't stop you from getting what you need at your job, whether it be a promotion or whatever, or you get your advancement. Every one of you should always be taking classes or courses to better yourself so that you can increase because your skill level actually allows you to get paid more in this world. So you should always be learning your skills. Whatever you're doing, it should, you should always be learning. But what I'm trying to tell you all is in the warfare, the way that it switches over is when you know that you're redeemed and you know that God is not holding your past sins against you, to quote the Bible, and you know that now you're anointed and called and that you have authority on the earth. And this is the big one. And this is what I want to tell you. It's going to come in this room right now. And you're going to feel the shift. And that is, is, that, is that when you know that you're no longer a victim, that the victim is Satan and that this is the secret. This is what I saw. I saw in heaven when I was there that Satan is actually afraid of me. He's actually afraid of you. He's really afraid of you. But what he's afraid about you is that you would come to these conclusions about what Paul wrote about, about us. It's the things that we didn't emphasize in church, and so people remained powerless, but they're really not. All of us are full of resurrection power. All of us have authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. All of us do. All of us do. So this is what I know to be true. Now, I have spoken in South Africa. I spoke in a church that had 31,000 people in it. That was my first year of ministry. But I'd rather speak to you all, even though those people were watching, and it was amazing. All those people were amazing. What I'm saying is, is this is relational. Because I feel like I can come out here. I wasn't allowed off the stage there, because everybody, all the ushers, they had 50 caliber machine guns. When they parked your car, 50 caliber, machine guns with bullets all over. And um, I mean, they came and met me at the airplane, me and my wife from Dubai. And we, were, we never had, we had never were alone without an armed person. We were escorted back to our plane and put right there in front of the aircraft with armed individuals that were handing out money to everybody to, to, to get through and get say It's all about money. Okay, so all of you have authority but you have to be sent. You can't just do something. You got to know what God is saying to you because there is no real back steps. Okay, so this has already been done. And this is, this is what I saw is the relationship part of it is when you realize that you make a mark in history because you were sent, that you're on the earth assigned. It says it in Acts 17. Look it up when you get home. In Acts 17, it talks about the fact that God knew every person when they would live on the earth and what part of the, of, the, of the earth they would be on, what group of people they would be with, and that he had planned all this from the beginning. So each one of us, it was already planned. And even Jesus said before he was ascended, he preached for 40 days after the resurrection, and then he said this, it is not for us to know the times and the seasons, but only the Father himself. Well, he said that. But we have all these prophecy teachers. And Jesus told me, he said, I don't know when I'm coming back. And I go, yeah, I read that in the Bible. Because he said, not the angels. The angels don't know. The Holy Spirit doesn't know. He said, the Holy Spirit does not know. He said, I don't know. Only the Father knows. And that is the absolute truth. That is the absolute truth. He does not know. But the other thing that he does not know is your past sins. They do not exist in heaven. Okay, so when you get to heaven, 
I mean, the thing that, that the reason why I'm exhausting myself and doing this every day and, and I'm, you know, doing whatever I can to keep my staff upright and, and full of life. And, my, and Kathy is like, she's, the reason I'm married to her is because she's the only person I've never thrown off. She's never been thrown off. She could ride a horse and the horse would die before she would. <laughs> she's a horse trainer, but she's the only one that can stay I mean, as soon as I came back from heaven, the Lord told me to go to Seattle, and, I, and he said, I'll, you'll meet your wife up there. Four months later, I, uh, we were married. And it's going to be 30 years in May. Okay, this is the kind of thing that God destines for all of us, is to get in that track where we're in relationship, and whether you live or die, it doesn't matter, because you're in love. You're in love, and it's worth it. It's totally worth it. And Jesus showed me all this. He said, listen... The, the, the thing about, about people is they think that we have done all these terrible things, but we are not in charge of the earth. The prince of the power of the air, according to Paul, is in charge. And it says, all of you, he said, were under his power until you came to the Lord. And now you, you are in the church and you are full of the authority and the power of God. It says that the glory of God is revealed in these last days through the church. It's a testimony, it says, and judges the princes of power of the air. Okay, so here's what happens. Because you don't believe in certain things, that's why the prince of the power of the air is able to, to deceive people that are Christians. So this, this is, this, I've never talked about this before, but it's time to say it. What I saw in heaven was is that anybody can say anything and get a group of people to believe in them or agree with them, and it'll actually happen. And it's totally bogus. You can get people, you can tell them anything. You can tell somebody anything, and if they believe it, the power that a human being has in a group of people, they could build a city named Babel and build a tower that would reach heaven where God said, if I don't come down and stop them, there's nothing they will not be able to, to do that they've imagined, imagined. It was imagination. He had to come down and stop them. There was nothing that they would have been able to do, wouldn't have been able to do if they had not come down. These were people that were hybrids. These weren't even people that believed in God. But they would succeed at what they had chosen to do because of their unity. So he had to separate them by language. The days of plague, the continents separated. All because he had to slow down the effects of sin in the world. He had to send people, these beings, they're huge. They're not angels, they're not the elders. They're, they're, they're from the line of Melchizedek. These beings were on the earth Nobody elected them. They have no birth certificate, just like some of our presidents. They, they have no, there was no death certificate, no birth certificate. Nobody knows who these people are. They were likened unto the Son of God, but they were not the Son of God, because if it were the Son of God, it would have said Melchizedek was the Son of God. But it says likened unto. These beings were there just to curb sin. Now, where have you ever heard that before? But that's exactly what Melchizedek was. They were all over the earth, and it was to curb sin until the law came. And then when law came, Paul said, sin revived and I died. But he was fine until the law came. I mean, according to Romans 7, right? Is this too much for you? So what I saw in heaven is you can get people, a group of people to do anything. And everyone else will look and say, that's really stupid. But to those people, they drink that Kool-Aid and they die in Africa from one man who was a liar and deceived a whole bunch of people that went and gave all their money. And I think I should just say all this stuff because no one else will. The thing of it is, is human beings are very powerful because God made them in His image. However, in a fallen state, we know the difference between good and evil. We were never supposed to know that. So we're, we cannot resist evil because only God can. That's why he could only eat from the tree. When their eyes were open, we got a big problem now because they got free will. So they can choose to do evil. And that's why Cain and Abel, 
when you see what happened, all this, and by Moses, Moses, um, you know, think about what Moses had to deal with, with those people. God had performed miracles for them. Think about Noah. Only eight survived the flood. Out of all the millions of people that were on the earth, he had, God had to destroy all human beings because they had interbred. I mean, according to the Bible, if you want to bring the Bible into it. Okay, so... That's why Paul was constantly speaking about the truth and tell, telling the people to, to, to stick with sound teaching. is because you could, you could actually see things happen and God might not even be involved in it. So I saw this start to happen with ministers. They, they started yielding to these spirits. I saw my, people that I know. They were legitimate ministers, and what happened was they started to let off the throttle. They stopped being diligent and seeking God, and they, they, they started to coast in their, their position instead of their relationship. But you can't tell them. Okay, so what happens is, is I saw, I mean, these are people that I know. I saw that all of a sudden while they're talking, there was a familiar spirit. It was another spirit that gave them information that I used to see when, when, um, when my, the, my flight attendant friends, we'd go out to eat and they want to go get their palm read. I'm like, you don't need to do that. I'll give you, I'll give you a word right now. Repent. You know, <laughs> like I would tell them, I said, you don't need those tarot cards. You, you want to know God's will? Let's pray. I'll pray in tongues and I'll interpret. They're like, what? I could, I could tell you what the Spirit's saying over here. I could do that with every one of you. I can pray in tongues, and then the Lord would give me the interpretation. I can give you a word. But see, the, the body is dependent upon that. That's why we don't do that right now. I'm going to start doing it again because of the maturity levels. You, got, you all got to get, get uh, your relationship going where you hear from God for yourself. And if you can't hear from God, just open your Bible. I mean, it's amazing. It's like a talking book. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So what I saw was, is that these, these uh, beings know stuff, and so they started, like, telling the, it's okay. I'll, <laughs> I don't want, we, we called this uh, in, in Louisville, um, the flight crew, every time we were in Louisville, we would go down to this one place. It was the best oriental food, but we, we, we called it, um, it was, one man cho, but it was one man show, but we called it one man cho. And uh, the reason why is we would go in there, it's so good. But the reason why it was is there was only one employee. So there wasn't enough people there to mess it up. <laughs> so we would go in there, all of us. It was like the soup Nazi, you know, you'd arrive, you'd walk up there and you'd, you'd just say, and you would order, you know, say he would, this guy would seat you. But you look at the menu, he'd go and seat you, and then he would come out and he would have an apron on now. And he would take your order. And I kid you not, like, we'd be sitting there and like, man, where is this guy? Uh, where's, where's our, um, you know, where, where's our, you know, our hostess or whatever? And I look back, man, now he's got a chef's hat on and he's got Ginsu knives. And, and vegetables are flying everywhere. He's, he's cooking our meal. And then he served it. And then when we got, went back out, we paid. We paid him. So we called him One Man Show. <laughs> One Man Show, you know. But any, anyway. At, at, at times, in your relationship with God, you got to be able to operate, even if it's just you, and know that God is, can do this for you. So this is what I saw is the switch now, the separation of the sheep and the goats. I'm telling you the truth. I have never been able to say this before, but there are sheep and goats, and you should see the people that get into heaven and the people that don't. And, I, you know, it, because of uh, pressure with money, nobody wants to preach this way because then, you know, people might leave, you know, and, and not, they, didn't, they came to hear something else, you know, or whatever. But the problem that I have with this is that Jesus, I met him. I met Jesus face to face. And this is the person that you do not want to be on the wrong side of. Okay, so he will actually encounter you someday. He actually is, you could say, well, Lord, you know, I cast out demons. I healed the sick. You know, I did all these things. Which you, if you talk to the seven sons of Sceva in the Bible, they, they did not have the anointing and the ministry of being a Christian. They had saw Paul and Jesus. So they said, told the demons in the name of the Jesus that Paul preaches, come out. Okay, so they didn't come out. They beat them up. 
So after they were beat up, they had to go to Ross dress for less and get clothes. <laughs> but they didn't have the authority to cast out devils. So if, if somebody was casting out devils and healing the sick, it had to be under the Holy Spirit's power. Okay, but Jesus said, I never knew you. Okay, that is not the same as position. That is relationship. Now, some of you are looking at me like, because that's in the Bible, but you, will, you don't hear these things being preached. And the, that's why we are still immature. We don't grow up because we need the full counsel of God in order to deal with the things we are. So the Jesus I met, and so what happened was there were times where Jesus has appeared to me, and these times, these visitations, I was not allowed to share at times. I was asked not to share certain things. And I asked why. And they said, well, you would have to have um, a partner drive because I would lose a lot of partners if you said that. Or it didn't follow with their, with their uh, gig on how, what's going to happen. See, because they were telling me, you can't, you know, because I knew there were many years left. You know, I mean, and, you know, just because um, somebody sailed the president down the river, it doesn't mean the end's coming. And people thought, well, th this is it, you know. The red dragon's coming out of the water and the bulls of wrath and everything. And I said, oh, no, we got plenty of years left. This is what happens in every generation. Well, you know, people are like, so, no, it's not going to be, it's going to be. I said, no. And so now, like, you were right. I go, yeah, I know I was right because Jesus told me. He said he doesn't know when he's coming back, but he said China has to come in, Russia has to come in, the Middle East has to come in. There's, he said those souls still have to come in. So he, he said, I can tell you. He said, I don't know the date. I'm not, I'm not told that. He said, but I can tell you what the signs would be on the earth. He said, I said it in Matthew 24. He said, until this gospel is preached in all the world, he said, the end will not come until that point. And it has not been preached in all the earth. Because if it was, he would have came back already. He would have been sent back. So I saw in heaven that it's more about people realizing that God is, is waiting on us. We're not waiting on him. And so if I saw that certain people that you, you think they're your heroes, like John G. Lake. I mean, I studied, I mean, I've read every sermon. I've studied every sermon, every, every book that is on any of these people. There's hundreds of people that we all know. I've read every one of their books. I've listened to every one of their sermons, videos from the 40s, 30s. I've read all the books from John G. Lake and, and Smith Wigglesworth. And what I determined from all these people is that they were not well liked when they were alive, but they were he they're heroes now. But you wouldn't get along with them if you weren't 100% in sold out because that's the way they were now I know people that live with them I mean I know people that had the anointing of Smith Wigglesworth because they lived with him they taught my class I sat under their teachings I had them lay hands on me I felt something from the other realm touch me when when Lester Summerall prayed over me and if I had any invisible friends that weren't good they left even though I was a Christian and that goes over well. But this is what he said. He, he said, because he, he talked to the, because we're all ministers, you know, and we're all in training. So he said, the number one question I get asked is, can a Christian have a demon? And he said, the number, the, the number one answer I give is, I don't know, but if there's a devil, he needs cast out. <laughs> but what Jesus showed me was, is that a Christian can't have a demon but a demon can have a christian because it has to do with domain it has to do with what a christian has given a demon so if you've given them your eyes or your ears or or parts of you then like peter he could speak by satan when he spoke by the spirit the day before and said thou art the christ the son of the living god jesus said what you have just said you got from my father that was re not revealed to you by man that was given to you by my father the next day, because you just flip your Bible page over, um, that is when Jesus said, I'm going to go and be delivered. I'm going to suffer at the hands of men. On the third, I'm going to die crucified. He actually says how he's going to die. He says on the third day he will be risen from the dead. He even tells them it will be three days. But no one was waiting at the tomb. But it is clear in the Bible that he, he announced how he would die 
and that he would be back in three days. Okay, all of that happened, and Peter said no. Why? Because it, you have to do the study on zealots. There were two zealots on his team, and those zealots were actually assassins. They would, they would actually, one by one, kill Roman soldiers because they were part of the, the insurrection movement that was going on. So people would rise up to try to get Rome out of there. They were trying to rise up to take back their country. So that's where that word insurrection came. It didn't happen on January 6th. Okay, you're not going to believe one of the people that failed in the insurrection, you're not going to believe who it was. Barabbas. So these guys, when they saw, when Judas saw, he was one of them, when Judas saw him ride on that donkey, which was prophesied about, the Messiah, they saw him, they, said, they, they, they sang that song. Hosanna. Put palm, tree, palm branches down. But he didn't go to the center of the city and then set himself up as king. So if you look, the next day, they went to throw him over the hill. The next day. Is everybody listening to me? I'm trying to show you something here. Is the communication of the Spirit is sometimes nonverbal. Sometimes it's relational. It's caught. And the Spirit of the Lord is shifting in this room right now. He's shifting your perception because you got to get this. Is that when Judas saw that, he said, we have another failed coup. So he went and at least he's going to make some money off of it. And then when, when Pilate said, well, who do you want? Do you want me to give you? I can, I can release a, a, pass, a passenger. I can release, <laughs> I can release a prisoner. Well, some of you are prisoners on airlines, you know. <laughs> and um, they said, give us Barabbas. Why? Because Jesus had failed and at least Barabbas had tried. They wanted a king. They had figured it out that this is what the Messiah was. They missed their visitation. Okay? That is what's happening right now to all of us. We're missing our visitation. The Spirit is communicating to us, but it's Paul. It's Paul. We have to get back to the five year old level of the Scriptures. So I'm going to read something to you. Is it still today? Oh, it's only 8.30. Cool. This is great. I'm, I'm on my own time zone, so Sven has to stay up late now. He's on East Coast. So. <laughs> okay. I want you to turn Romans 8, and I want you to listen to this, because this, this what happens is that everything is cyclical. So there, the Greek thought, Satan put the, the Greek thought into culture because it's linear. So everything is flat. See, now the earth's flat. Even though that's been resolved. Okay, so everything is linear. So you have pagan holidays. They made it linear. So everything is on paper, which is only length and width. Is everybody following me? Is this too much? I'm sorry. This is my first time here. But I feel the anointing so strong. I got to do this. Okay. All right, it's really good for you. Okay, linear, so today is Thursday. Right, it's Wednesday, right? So that's, that's a Greek God. Thursday's a Greek God, Friday's a Greek God, Saturday is Saturn, you know, Sunday is the sun. And, and then you have all the, the days, the months, and the calendar. It's based on... on, on um, on Greek thought, okay? But God's, God's culture, that he chose the Hebrew people, it's cyclical because it's oriental. It's an oriental way of thought because it's the Middle East. So, like, for instance, when I met Jesus, he, he wasn't blonde hair and blue eyes. So, he, you know, I, I, I realized he's not American, you know? <laughs> he was Middle Eastern, you know? And I kind of looked like him, and that was kind of weird because I didn't understand that. He goes, well, we have the same father. Because my spirit was, looked like him. Because I was out of my body. It was just kind of weird. 
Okay, so I, did, I looked like, you know, I say this because it usually thins the herd because I'm not in church. I'm not in church, but I looked. I was in the image of God, which is what Genesis 1.26 says. Because without my fallen body, I was back to how God intended me to be. So our bodies are fallen, and we're trapped in this realm, but there's many realms. Many realms. And, you know, and, and people are going to be shocked when the heavenly Jerusalem comes down and they find out that the earth is not a big flat pizza with pepperoni on it. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a sphere like all the other planets and all the suns. It's so weird. I only do this to poke the hibernating bear because people get upset. But the thing of it is, is, is we're not asking those kind of questions. What we're asking is, why are we here and how effective can we be in these last days? And the answer to that is by relationship. Okay, so when I got access to NASA, you know, I can't go there on my own. If you touch down, I mean, you're in trouble. So we had to like file, we had to have background checks, we did all that. And then we had to go to a certain hangar where these, these, these uh, supersonic jets were, go to school. We just stayed right there, we did whatever we were told. We even got, we, we didn't even need the badges, but they said, just go get them. So, because I wanted them. I just wanted to say I was there, you know. But to have something, like, it's just huge, you know. Okay, so the, the bottom line is, is that my position couldn't get me on there, but a relationship with the instructor who cleared all this to get my type rating training in an F-104 got, got all of us on there. And we just piggybacked off of him. So he had the, the real nice badge that was like, you know, expired in a year or two, you know. Ours expired in two days. <laughs> right? <laughs> but for two days, I really felt, you know, I went almost the speed of sound. I mean, went over the speed of sound and went really high and fast. And, you know, I felt like, because uh, it's astronaut training. But, you know, it was relationship is what I'm trying to say. I, I, I didn't have the position to do that. I'd be in jail right now. I'd be broadcasting from jail, you know. <laughs> hey, yeah, I did it. <laughs> I'm really stupid, <laughs> but I did it. No, do you get it? Okay, so Jesus gave us access, but the, the things that we're not picking up in Scripture is, is that there's so much that's relational. So, like, I have, I, have, I, have, I, have, I have I've actually done things where I didn't pass, but... Through relationship, I said, can I do this? Can I try it one more time? Because I know I can do this. Well, I'm not supposed to do that. I said, but I can do this. And they said, all right. And did it and passed. That was not because of position. That was because I, I gained favor. It was, do you get it? Okay, this is the Jesus I met. You can break all the rules and say, Lord, have mercy on me. And he said, stand up, I forgive you. Okay, so part of the, the visitations that I had was Jesus would appear to me and he would, st he, st he would stand in front of me. And I would wake up and he would say, don't find yourself on the wrong side of me. And he had fire in his eyes. And then what had happened was I had had so much good stuff happen to me. I mean, I had favor that I started to think I was it, you know. And I was like best friends with him. And I got too familiar. And I was, I was, I was relaxed in, I wasn't um, dishonoring, but it was getting to that point. And this is what happens to all of us. Some of us, we get too familiar and we start to disrespect. And um, that, that's, uh, the other time it was is that I, when I got asked to, 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 the Lord said, you can start sharing. It was over 20 years before I could share the experience. I was allowed to share it, so I shared it in a prayer meeting. But I didn't, I didn't announce it. I sat in the back row in a prayer meeting in my church. Wasn't allowed to preach, but there was a prayer meeting. And this lady, Sister Ruth, um, she, she called me up. And she said, the Lord told me to give you the service. But she didn't know that the Lord had told me. And she didn't know about me going to heaven or anything. So I just started talking, and people just started falling. The whole room fell out. And there were people laid out for five hours, and I just went home. I went home. <laughs> right, right, honey? Do you remember that? And that's how it started. 
So then, so then a friend of mine <laughs> called me and said, man, my pastor's like kind of afraid of you, but we've talked him into having you. Would you come? <laughs> <laughs> so my first church was like, my friend had to talk his pastor into having me. Okay, so the short of it, it's a big story, but the, the short of it is, is that we went and I shared. But I said yes, and what happened was the Lord told me to, to get on a, a Southwest airplane. I went up and stayed at our house in Seattle, which I got by our own money, so I didn't even have offerings back there, so I didn't use your offering money for, to buy two houses. It's just God prospered us at our jobs. We, we worked all the time. And um, so he told me to go up there and sleep in the bed where Kathy got saved. It was, it was her, the house that she grew up in. Okay, so Jesus appears to me on the spot where she knelt down and gave her life to the Lord. He's appeared to me like three times there. But I didn't know. So I asked Kathy, why, why does Jesus stand there? And she goes, well, that's where I knelt. That's the bed. That's the bedroom. That was my bedroom, and that's where I gave my life to the Lord. And this is what he said to me. He said, I am the door. So I flew up there two and a half hours from Phoenix to hear him quote John. I said, yes, that's in John 8. Well, I, I know you're the door. He said, no, you don't understand obviously. He didn't say that, but you don't understand. You don't go anywhere on this earth unless it's through me. You never even asked me if, I could, if, I, if, if you could go to that church. And that was my first ministry opportunity besides that prayer meeting. And Brother Hagen had told us when we graduated, if you get an invite, you're not that good, so you just accept everything. And so I just listened to Brother Hagen and got in trouble because Jesus wanted to be the head of this ministry from the beginning so that I would learn to be sent. Oh, so, so there are things like that. I've had Jesus appear to me and say things to me. Um, you're not going to pray for this person anymore. They've, they've committed the unpardonable sin. They're, they're, they're going to hell. And they're, they were sat in the classes at Ramah and was a minister and went back into homosexuality. And I went to him and I said, you're married. What are you doing? He goes, I don't want to hear it. I know exactly what I'm doing. I sat in the same class as you did, and I have chosen to do this, and I don't care. And I went home. Do you know that that happened many, many years ago? I have not been able. I cannot utter a prayer for him, I, no matter how hard I try. Okay, so this goes over well. But so Ananias and Sapphira dying in the first and second service on Sunday morning also doesn't go over well, but it did happen, right, in the New Testament. Okay, so these are the things that because they're not being preached, we don't understand God. Because we ignore things about his personality. Is that we have to honor and fear him as well as love him. And that as long as we are in the place of obedience, which is his love language. He told me his love language is obedience. He said, if you really love me, you'll obey me. So because you love him, you obey him. It's not a chore. It's not a big job. Your life is not your own. I mean, the last time I checked, that was what the contract said. You signed over to that. And you were drafted into a war as well. So you were already signed up for the draft when you became a Christian. Because you, you're in a war. See, these things need to be accepted by all of us in this room. Okay, so here's what it says. The, in verse 14 of chapter 8. The mature children of God are those who are moved by the impulses of the Spirit. And you did not receive the spirit of religious duty, leading you back into the fear of being good enough leading you back into the fear of never being good enough. But you have received the spirit of full acceptance, or the spirit of adoption. So now we're in verse 15. You, you know this all in the King James, but this is the Passion Translation, which is from the Aramaic. And there are many, I use many translations. I check with them all. But Jesus spoke Aramaic, so, you know, take the hint. You know, if he spoke it. All right, so, enfolding you into the family of God. That's relationship. Now, that is position, but see, I, I just want you to know that the more I know God, I'm not going to fall back on position with him. It's better to have a relationship with him because I end up having to, I mean, me, you know, me, I've gone to heaven. We, I have 60 books out, 33,000 students, all this in five years. My own TV channel, my, my own publishing house, looking for more airplanes. 
the only way that I can say this happened is because I don't go by position with him. I go by relationship. I ask for help. I, I come to him knowing I can't do it. And see, that, that would, they would come and take my faith degree off my wall for that. It, by, by that confession, right? But see, I've learned that the fastest way to get something done with God is to say, I can't do it without you. Don't say you can't do it because you will do it after that. For, trust me. You don't want to say you, you can't do it. You say, I can't do it without you. You have to learn to depend upon him. That's love. That's not faith. Okay, so I'm going to tell you this. I received the airplane not by faith. I've been healed with no faith. <laughs> All the books I wrote, it, it wasn't faith. It was love. I was motivated to help other people. To come here tonight, after all, I mean, we just flew that airplane, just had an Orlando Spirit School, went and flew that airplane, went home, and Kathy and I stared at each other for two days. We couldn't hardly talk. <laughs> and then we did this whole five-day thing. And then we go home, and then we got all that schedule you heard. Okay, that can't be faith. That has to be love. So I'm just telling you, relationship will take you further than faith. Now look, you, if you could see now, you, do you realize how many friends I have lost? Because the bottom line is the Jesus I met is more concerned about my character than my comfort. He wants me to be the last one standing without any ammo left because I used it all. I want, if I die, I will die with my clip empty. And I will use everybody's around me. I am never giving up. I'm never giving up on you. I was sent back to do this right this time. I've been to the best faith schools. I have all these degrees. I'd had Jesus appear to me. And I, I only did what was a 35% Jesus showed me. 35% of my potential. Because he showed me the opportunities that were there every day that were based on relationship and on love. Because if I had the faith to move mountains, but I didn't have love, I, I, wouldn't, I was nothing. Right? Okay. All right, here's, are we doing good? Okay. All right. Since we are his true children, we qualify to share all his treasures. For indeed, we are heirs of God himself. And since we are joined to Christ, we also inherit all that he is, and all that he has. We will experience being co-glorified with him, provided that we accept his sufferings as our own. Okay, so the only way that we can encounter what he just said was to also accept his sufferings. When you have heard that, that's not a faith message. And we, you know, in the sense of, I'm not, you, I'm not down. You've got to understand, these are all my friends. But what I'm saying is, at what point does someone stand up and say, there's got to be more? Well, P Paul said it. He was talking about the spiritual gifts. He goes, I'm going to show you a better way. And then you know that chapter you skip in your Bible, the 13th chapter, the love chapter? It's in between 14 and 12. And, and the 12 is spiritual gifts and 14 is spiritual gifts, which are worn out in everybody's Bible. But the, uh, the bottom line is, is that in the Bible it says the better way to, to, to operate in those is through love. And then here it says the only way that we can encounter who he is, who he is and, who, and what he has is through accepting his sufferings as our own, which kind of will settle you into it. It doesn't mean that you have to like, uh, you know, we have all these fears of what God's going to do to see if you really mean it. And the, the bottom line is, is if you mean it, he doesn't have to have you show it to you. He knows your heart. What he wants us to do is realize that we're suffering already by living here. By being alive, we're suffering. And that there's a groaning going on. And I can prove it to you because it says here in 26, it says, in a similar way, the Holy Spirit takes hold of us in our human frailty. So it doesn't say in your, your height of your faith, the Holy Spirit comes in and says, well, now I can work with them. 
Why is this being preached? It says here, in a similar way, the Holy Spirit takes hold of us in our human frailty. In our weakness is what it says. And so to empower us in our weakness. Okay, for example, at times we don't know what we should pray. And how the best things to, are, are what they are to ask for. So the Holy Spirit rises up with a super, uh, us to super intercede on our behalf, pleading to God with emotional size too deep for words. And God is the searcher of the heart and knows fully our longings, yet he also understands the desires of the Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit passionately pleads before God for us. Well, can you do better than that? Do you realize what has happened to us? We got back into works. We got back into works. You know how my prayer starts out in the morning? I, say, I, say, I tell the Lord, what are we doing today? What are you doing today? I said, what's going on today? What's the Holy Spirit saying? I, I, I go, what, what's, what's going on? And I start praying in the Spirit. And I might pray an hour. I might pray. We've prayed 14 hours. And Kathy and I are like, oh, I'm going to go get a bath and then we'll get going with this. I mean, there are times where that's all we do. There's other times where the anointing says strong, and the Lord says, no, like tonight. He says, no, you just go in there and you deliver this message, and you walk out, and you go home, and you come back. So that's what I'm doing. But what I'm saying is, is that the Holy Spirit knows the heart of God, and he comes in in our frailty. So why are we trying to be strong? I would just turn yourself in. I mean, if, if I, I guess it is my meeting. I guess I could say what I want. But the Holy Spirit, he's, he's a person that literally wants to counsel us and take hold of us in our weakness and then bring us and empower us and lift us up and super intercede for us on behalf of God's will. So that's what I believe that Satan fights spiritual things and people being spiritual and people praying in the spirit and people getting together and agreeing. This is the other thing. This is the second thing I got to do about communication is is it's embarrassing. There are times where I've fasted and prayed. I've gone 21 days. I got to where I couldn't speak in English anymore. And I was caught up. I actually was translated. I was actually translated and brought back. So I got used to that. So I would just pray and fast. And, I would, and he told me to read Isaiah out loud. So I, pray, I, I, I would pray in tongues. I did this for a week. I read Isaiah, all 66 chapters, 20, and when I'd fall asleep, I'd wake up and keep doing it. I did that for 21 days. I read Isaiah out loud, 21 days, over and over again, or I spoke in tongues. And then I couldn't get back into English anymore, and I was caught up. I was taken to the fairgrounds in Springfield, Missouri. I was shown them, I was there. I was actually... I was actually in college at the time, and, but, but nobody went out at night in that part of town, and there was no fair going on at the time. And so I was, I, was, I was taken out, placed over there in a bad part of town, and I saw a man coming, and he, he came right past me, and the Lord said, you show him, you tell him about my spirit. And so he was startled. He wasn't from there, I found out later. And I just joined him on the sidewalk, and we, he was walking to the, to the hotel there where he was staying. He was in, there in business, and he, was, he had come from Kansas City, and he was in Springfield, Missouri. And I said, sir, the Lord has sent me to talk to you about the Spirit. The only thing was, is I went there in the Spirit, saw all this, and talked to him, came back to my room, and then I had to walk the whole way to the fairground and do it all over again in the flesh. Now, how do you explain all this? But this really happened. The guy, I waited and there he was, here he comes. Just with the same shirt, everything. So I just did the whole thing over again. And he goes, you're an angel because there's no way you, you, sh you to know it. He said, I'm on a prayer walk and my neighbors are telling me that that baptism in the Holy Spirit is of the devil. But he said, I feel like the Lord is telling me I need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And now you come up here and you came out of nowhere. He said, I actually saw you up here. And he said, he said uh, there's no way you can know. I, was just, I had all the verses on being baptized in the Holy Spirit memorized. So I was just telling him. 
And um, he really thought, he goes, no, you tell me your real name. You're an angel. I said, There's, no, I'm not an angel. So I literally, I literally gave him my information. He gave me his, and he said, I, I'm leaving tomorrow morning. So I went back to my, I walked back to the college campus, and um, I had a book that was, that talked about being baptized in the Holy Spirit, and I, I was supposed to send that to him. And the next day, I was fasting, reading Isaiah, and he, the Lord said, put it in your pocket. And as I'm praying in the Spirit, out in English, the Lord said to me, go to the high school, which is really far away. And I saw myself in the Spirit go there and stand in the middle of the parking lot at midnight. He said, take that book with you. So I, had a, I came back, I, I, I walked it out. It took a long time to get there. I had it in my back pocket. And he said, Stan, I stood right in that spot. And a police officer came up and said, what are you doing? I go, well, I'm just standing here. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for a friend, which was true. He says, well, you know, it's a bad part of town. I go, yeah, I'm from the, the, the Bible college there. And um, so he left. And then another car came in, and it was that guy. His flight was canceled because of bad weather, so he's out driving, and he just drove into the parking lot. I go, well, here's your book, the book that I was going to mail him. Now, what I'm trying to tell you is, is that a man who prayed and asked if the Holy Spirit was real and if all this stuff, he was just seeking God diligently. Look what God did for him. Many, many, many stories like this. I could just, if you want, I can keep sharing, but it is getting, it's almost nine. But this is things that happen not as a minister. You know, and that's, that was the big deal, is, that, is the communication of the Spirit sometimes is, is not in the fasting and the praying, even though that stuff happened. What he told me to do was, he told me, go hang out with a group of students and pray. Because I was a brand new Christian. I was having all this supernatural stuff happen, but I didn't have many friends. Because I, I was just a brand new Christian, and I was actually scared. I was actually scared of the college I went to. Because I was learning about God, but I wasn't learning, a, a, I wasn't learning Him. I was learning about Him. And I was learning the seven ways to do this, and the seven ways that Jesus does this, and you know, the pre and the post and the mid-trib. And I'm like, I just want to get out of here. You know, I don't care when it is. You know. Yeah, so what I did was I, I went on my floor, and this is what I want to tell you, is that when God shifts you into love and when he shifts you into fellowship, is it cuts down on a lot of stuff that you have to do on your own. And that's why Warrior Notes has been formed, just for, for everybody to be connected. Because this is what happened. On my floor, um, there was about four people that I felt like were just like me, and they wanted everything that God wanted. And so we were all like one guy was into witchcraft and he, you know, another guy was like a, a you know, like a, I don't know, he's watching, so I don't want to, and he's, he's world known. All these people are world known. So I, I want to be careful. But anyway, um, he was like a, a, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> so we got, we started getting together and praying. We would pray in tongues for hours and then we would go out and we would go witnessing. So we would go roller skating or we would go places and we would just sit all night. Like all the, all, all, the, all the students would sit and study. But Friday nights, we would just go out and witness every Friday. So one guy was Bruce and, and one great guy was Craig. And then one a guy, I called him Haji, but his name was Roger. He was from India and I called him Haji. And he didn't seem to mind, you know, he just this giggle, you know, just shake his head. You know. But anyway, Roger Colmeyer and and Bruce, um, Craig, and Craig Keener. We would all get together and pray. And then we would witness. And so now, Roger, and, and when we get together and pray, it was so much easier than just doing it yourself. And this is what I want to tell you, is God never wants us to all just be like isolated. Because miracles would happen, it was so much easier. It would be less time praying, and people would get saved, and. Um, Think about this. Roger left the, the, the Assemblies of God College and, and became an apostle in India and in Sri Lanka. 504 churches today. 
okay? Craig Keener, he is the head professor at Asbury College. <laughs> and Bruce Craig, I was just with him two nights ago. He has a church in Kansas City. I haven't seen him in 35 years. But they're all still in the ministry. But, you know, the rest of the thousands, I don't know where they're at. I'm trying to tell you something. Is you got to let God put you where you're supposed to be, but then you got to get with the people that you're supposed to be with. Because you, you only fight so long by yourself, and then God will bring you people. Okay? All right, so let's finish this with this verse. Because if you look in Romans, Paul actually made this as a template for our life. All right, 856. You can, stay, you can take four more minutes. Okay. Siri, get saved. She's taking, taking my Romans away from me. I can't believe it. Okay. So what does this all mean, Paul says in, in verse 31? What does this all mean? If God has determined to stand with us, tell me then, who could ever stand against us? Okay, so this was just as true in the last three years as it was when Paul wrote this from jail. It's so powerful, but, but if God's for us, who can be against us, all right? And it just goes from there. And this is the Jesus I met, and that's what I came here for tonight. I want you all to know who I met. I want you all to know that I'm not leaving you all. I'm going to come back, but I need you all um, to help in this city with people that are not in church. I just want to help people that are not. I'm not, I'm not after church people. I'm not after goats. I'm not after tares. You know, I'm, I'm not after the unwise virgins. I'm, I'm, I'm after the people that are hurt and need a friend and need to hear the good news of the gospel. And, I, and that's what I'm here for. So I'm asking you to help me. But if who would dare accuse those whom God has chosen in his love? Who, who, would, who would accuse these people? That's what Paul said. Who would accuse us that God has chosen in his love? Okay, so... He's issued a final verdict over them, not guilty. All right? We read on, 34. Who then is left to condemn us? Certainly not Jesus, the anointed one. For he gave his life for us, and even more than that, he has also conquered death and is now risen, exalted, and enthroned by God at his right hand. So how could he possibly condemn us since he continually prays, is continually praying for our triumph? So then it goes, who could ever separate us from the endless love of God's anointed one? Absolutely no one. Okay, this is what I know. This is just as true today as it was when I met him. When I was in heaven and I, I could have stayed, which is what I wanted to do, but he said, I'm sending you back. You, it's, it's about the people I'm sending you to. So I'm here tonight because he sent me back for you. Not for myself, because he said, it's not about you, Kevin. It's about the people that need to hear this. I'm sending you back. I'm sending you back. Tell them the truth. Tell them what you saw. Tell them the truth about us. He, he actually said, defend me in the Father, is what he said. Defend me to the people, because we're not doing these terrible things on the earth. Preach the good news. Amen? Okay, so now the decision making process in my services are like this. The Holy Spirit wants you to assess the things that, that you've heard and place them in your heart and ask God, okay, how do I get to where I need to be based on what I've heard? And the, the most people will tell you, well, you just build up your faith or you do this, or give an offering, or have them lay hands on you, things like that, you know. And it's really weird. It turns into this kind of like a, a process type thing. It's like a, a, you know, they process you. Whereas the real, the real spirit of God, and the real church, and the real everything that the Bible teaches, is more about the fact that He moves within you. In Him you move and live and have your being. And He speaks to your heart. And then 
it becomes part of you permanently. So this is, this is what happens in the service, is you receive the impartation by the Word of God, which is corporate. It's a corporate anointing. So if the individual anointing that each person has, if they lay hands on you, you experience what they're walking in, but you can't continue with that if you don't have them because that's what they're walking in. And I've been walking with God for 43 years. And so you're going to sense, you're going to feel that. But see, everyone is supposed to have their own anointing and they're supposed to walk in that. So what happens is, is you, if I laid hands on you, you would feel the power of God. If I gave you a word, it would be a word from God. The only thing is, is that can you, do you have the 43 years to walk in what I'm walking in? Because you, you, you have to have your own relationship. So the bottom line is, if God's going to do a miracle in your life, it's going to be between you and Him. You can't rely on people all the time because if you experience the power of God like in this room, what I'm telling you is, is in our meetings, without having to blow on anybody or you know, wave my jacket or all these other things, which you know, for that person, I mean, um, being Benny, Benny Hinn was sent to me. He actually was told by God and gave me a whole hour and prophesied over me, laid hands on me. It was so strong. But then after that, something happened with him. And, and now it's not like it used to be. But it got on me. But it was permanent. I don't, I don't need him to call me. I don't need to sit with him anymore. It was imparted to me. What I'm saying is, is that Jesus told me, if you go back, that you, you will have fruit that lasts, that it'll be permanent. So every person in here, what you're experiencing in this room is yours to go with it's not going to leave you because you're not experiencing my personal it's the corporate body do you understand what i'm saying or no because i know we're all framed like we have all these individual anointings and it's been it's been amazing but the thing of it is it didn't get us through what we just went through where where did all these people go i just want to know where all the healing evangelists did god just stop did, did that disease was that like off the list wasn't covered wasn't covered in the healing covenant? Okay, so what happened? People got afraid because they encountered something bigger. And I think that they, people were relying on the fact that they were doing it. But God is the one that heals. Okay, so because God loves you, He could heal you without faith. No, think about it. I go, oh, that's false. See, because you're, you've been told that. Jesus healed people that didn't have faith. Okay, for instance, I saw this in heaven. This goes over well. They're going to throw bottles at me. I saw that you can stop giving, never give again, and still go to heaven. Now think about that. Did you feel like the, oh. Because you think that you have to do certain things to get accepted. Now, we're the biggest givers. I dare you to give more than us. All of us are supposed to give. It's part of it, the kingdom. It's, it's not wrong. It's, 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 but the thing of it is, is what about authority? What about telling the devil to let go? Like, like what I saw in heaven was that the devil, Satan, was holding back from Christians because he knew if they got the friends they were supposed to have, if they got the church they were supposed to go to, if they got the finances or the job they were supposed to have, or if they got the nutrients in their body that they were supposed to have, that he couldn't touch them. You wouldn't believe what God's perfect will is. You wouldn't even believe it, because I saw it. And that is, is that we are to live in health, not have to believe for healing. But it's partly because of our diet. It's partly because of this environment we live in. And it's so, some of the things are so simple. That's why we do courses on it, because I bring in nurses and doctors so that I'm not, you know, because I'm not, I'm not I'm a doctor of theology, but I'm not a doctor. And, um, you know, I'm not a biologist, and I identify as a male, you know. <laughs> but I'm not a biologist. No, you see what I'm saying? It's all about confusion. So anyway, we, we, we want you to hear from God to enough to where he says, don't eat that anymore. Don't drink that anymore. Don't go here. Don't do this. That's what the, yeah. the impulse of the Spirit, those who are spiritually mature, they are led by the impulses of the Spirit. 
So he can tell you what you're supposed to be involved with and not involved with. For instance, there's people in here. There's people in here that you don't know why you're not married. Did you ever think that the person you're supposed to marry is not ready yet and you, God doesn't want you to be with them? Do you ever think it's not your fault? Do you ever think that your loving father is wanting to help you and that it would be better for you to stay single? And that doesn't go over well. But see, the thing of it is, <laughs> but the, you just talked to somebody who's been divorced a couple times. Man, I feel the power of God. I feel the power of God. I don't even know if I can, I can walk. Something just happened right now. Oh, my God. <laughs> Dear Lord, you all. <laughs> you all getting this. So let's, let's, let's use our authority corporately now. Um, the, let's, I want to show you, because what's going to happen is you'll have what I call kisses from heaven. Finances will come. And if you didn't want to give in the offering, just let me know. I'll give you your money back. Because if you didn't give it cheerfully, I'd rather you not give it. What, what I'm going to show you, though, is, is this. I'm going to show you this week, this week something's going to happen. It won't be because you gave or didn't give. It's going to be because we're going to, we're going to take our authority come on. over evil spirits. I want to show you what will happen in the next couple of weeks. Is, is something's going to happen in your finances, it will have nothing to do with whether you give in the offering or not. And it won't be if you're, if, you're, if you're fasting or if you're not. It doesn't matter whether you drove here in a car or you walked backwards with a hot potato in your pocket, you know, and blowing snow. It doesn't matter. What I'm trying to show you is this, is that God has done so much th for us through Jesus Christ, which is all supposed to be preached through the gospel. But the gospel has not been preached, and so the body has not risen to the occasion. After 2,000 years, we at least ought to be as good as what Paul was preaching to the people in Colossians and Ephesians. They were seeing miracles every day. Amen? So let's do it. Um, Let's, let's stand, let's agree. I'm going to get Kathy up here. And um, let's pray. Let's pray and agree as touching our finances and then also with our health, you know, with our health. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> All right, so in Malachi 3.10, you know about the tithe, right? Because you, you get shoved down your throat every week. Okay, did you know there's actually other verses in Malachi? <laughs> Verse 16 through 25 says that those who spoke well of the Lord, a book of remembrance was written about them, that they had done well, had spoken well of the Lord. In other words, I have this against you, says the Lord, uh, Malachi said. He said, you, your words have been styled against me. You say, and it says it in every language, serving God doesn't pay. It says that. It doesn't pay to serve God. In other words, and, and he, he's, so they, they were saying that among the people there, and he said, your words have been really bad against me. But he said, those who had got together, right, they had got together and spoke well of the Lord in, in, a, in a community type of setting, like here. We spoke well of the Lord. It says a book of remembrance was written about them. And he said, on that day, when I give out my rewards, they will be jewels in my crown. So let's do that. Let's, let's just go ahead. Let's just go ahead and pick a spot in Jesus' crown. Let's, let's speak well of him. So let's, let's do that right now. If you want me to lead you, I'll just do what I do. But... Then we're going to agree as touching our finances and, and also our bodies, okay? And I'm going to hand it to Kathy. And, and who knows then? The power of God is here, okay? All right, so Father, I'm just going to say it. You just agree with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you. And Lord, we just speak well. You're the mighty God. You're the most high God. There's no one like you. You are the most high and you also dwell in eternity, Lord, but you also dwell with those who are humble. 
and contrite in spirit. And so, Lord, we humble ourselves under your mighty hand right now, all of us in Lafayette, we're, we're all in agreement. And we say, Lord, you haven't done these terrible things to us, that we have come into your love and we are protected and no one can separate us from that love. And so, Father, move among us. We want you to come to our house and live with us. We want you to visit our house, our children, and bring our children back to us. Bring, uh, bring our freedom back to us, Lord. Father, visit our house and then decide to move in. Father, we just exalt you. You are the most high. You are faithful. Lord, you're, and we break the, all the demonic entities that are stopping the finances right now. We break every demonic stronghold in the name of Jesus. I command you to go in Jesus' name. You let go of my family's finances in the name of Jesus. And we break sickness and disease. We command every evil spirit that's working in the bodies of those represented here and also in their families in the name of Jesus. And also, I command you to let go of every child that is represented in this room. Every child. I command those children to, to be released in the name of Jesus. I command all evil spirits to let go of those children. I, I, I know that the angels are going forth to retrieve them and bring them back home. In the name of Jesus, shake them up, Lord. Give them a dose, Lord, of your love and your, your power. Oh, let them just wake up tonight and feel your power, feel your love. In the name of Jesus. And Lord, we're going to pray often in the Holy Spirit. We're going to let you, Holy Spirit, pray out your perfect will for us. We need help. Say it, we need help. We need help. We need help. Oh, okay. So you have that check. So we, we've already told them that, you know, that I do this when I start something in a city. Um, I always give a check to the, um, so they can start a pantry. So here's $5,000. I'm going to give it to this couple here. And um, you all just can do, we already talked, right? And um, so that way it starts to flow among us, you know, and you can do this yourself. And, and start to flow. Do something for somebody that can't pay you back, and you watch what happens to this city. You watch what happens to your life. Um, it just, it's, a, it's just a can of beans or something, okay? It's not going to be that hard. Um, tell, tell, tell them that God loves them. Uh, find out if your neighbor needs something, blankets, food, whatever. Um, and and uh, I'm going to have Kathy come up. I love you all. Um, we will be back. Just pray that God puts it in. We'll just come right back here. We'll, just, we'll have, the, have it right here, okay? But this, this is permanent because chosen you and this place to do something amazing but it starts it starts with what we talked about tonight god bless you i love you here's here's my honey Amen. okay praise the lord i actually am so excited about what the lord's going to do tonight we're not going to go too long but um as kevin was sharing the story about how he was praying and fasting and the lord led him to that man that was crying out to be filled with the holy spirit Okay, well, the Lord had just reminded me as I was sitting here, and he's been trying to remind me all day, some things that Rachel said too, is that there was um, somebody who reached out to me on um, Facebook or somewhere on social media that was wanting to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And the Lord just reminded me of that. And um, so we're going to, um, is that person here? There's somebody who wanted released in the whole. Okay, we're gonna. You stay right there for a minute, okay? We're gonna all pray in the Holy Spirit first, just a little bit, okay? And just let the Holy Spirit um, have His way, because I think there's gonna be other people besides um, my my sister over here, okay? So Father, we just thank you for um, every everyone that's filled with the Holy Spirit. Let's just pray out the mysteries just a little bit here in this region. Shalakura kalesh tenekiria bokura babase. Ora baba sekiando kor mama se istore beshe 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 ora baba baba so ora baba baba so thank you lord hallelujah thank you lord just sealing in everything lord seal it in hallelujah okay now we're going to um i'm going to tell y'all a secret so if you were this is because I think there's going to be some other people that want to be filled. If you were going to have somebody that wanted to get born again, and they came and they said, "Hey, I want to get born again," um, would you? You would just say, "You'd be so excited. Let's pray, right?" 
because Jesus has already died. He already was, so salvation is here. And that's how it is with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's already here. He's here with us. The Lord already sent him. So he is willing and obedient. So I'm going to have <clears throat> my friend come up that wants to be filled. And anybody else in here that wants to be filled with the Holy Spirit, we're just going to, that's the bet. Get, besides getting born again, getting filled with the Holy Spirit is the best thing in the world. So I'm so excited that you are going to get released in your prayer language. Okay. Who else? Okay. And I got, just come stand up here. We're all going to pray together. And the only reason I'm having you up here is because if you, um, it's, it's so easy. He's already been poured out. And so thank you, Lord. We're just going to all pray a prayer together and then we're going to um, Got some of my, some of our team here that will help us out. <clears throat> this is now. You don't want any of your brothers and sisters to not be filled with the Holy Spirit, do you? <laughs> if you're filled with the Spirit, you know that you. We all. Jesus said, "It's better that I go away, because if I don't go, the Holy Spirit's not going to come." Okay, so we need to be filled with the Spirit. Okay. All right. Okay, so we're just gonna. You just repeat after me, okay? Yes, we can. Okay, sis, come here, my friend. I'm so glad. It's already happened. Just the fact that you said you want to be born again. He already, he's all, he's all over you, my friend. So, but we'll just pray and make it official, okay? Say, Jesus. Jesus. I know that you are the Savior. I know that you are the Savior. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me for all my sins. Come into my life. Come into my life. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Let me fulfill all my days. Let me fulfill all my days. And walk with you. And walk with you. Thank you. I'm a sinner. I receive you. Say, I receive, I for, receive. I receive forgiveness. Forgiveness. Thank you that your blood cleanses me. Thank you that your holy blood cleanses me. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Pastor, um, and then can we get her some books? Okay, all right. So we're going to get her, Pastor's going to take care of her. Okay, so now, so you're born again, right? Okay, because you have to be filled. Yeah. Comes after, yeah. Okay, so we're going to just, okay, so this is, we're just going to pray because our mouth sets it in motion, even though you already believe in your heart. So just, just play, pray with me. Say, Father, thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you. Jesus, thank you for dying for me and making a way for the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for sending the Holy Spirit. And I ask you now to baptize me with the Holy Spirit and fire. And I loose my tongue and I pray in other tongues now. Just begin to pray. There you go. Keep going. Put your hand on your belly, honey. Put your hand on your belly and say, more, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. Fire. 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 Holy Spirit and fire. You got it, honey. Keep going. Doesn't it feel good? It's the Holy Spirit. It's rivers of living water flowing through you. And the Lord, I just ask you for our sisters and anybody else that's praying that you uh, catch them up. Make up for lost time. The time they've been crying out, Lord, just door, let them pray out everything you've ordained them to pray out. It's your own language from the Holy Spirit. It's your own language. So praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay, um, this gentleman right here, you feel the power? Uh, that guy back there in the yeah. gray jacket and the green shirt. Yeah, you guys both got released, and now just 
You can. You don't have to come up here if you don't want to. Um, but yeah, you guys, both of you guys. Is there anybody else with you? Come on up. Yeah, all of you. Yeah, and just pray along with us, okay? I've never seen you before anything like that, but. What, what the anointing was on you, I need to know more about you. I don't know. But what I'm telling you is, whatever it is is going on, the Lord wants to include you in a big part of that. But what it has to do with is, is he said, yoke breaking. So I, I, while I was speaking the whole time, I was looking at certain people, and he said it has to be a yoke breaking anointing. So you have to study that. You have to study about how Jesus broke yokes. And that is, the, that is the power of the ministry of resurrection, is setting other people free. But it's a, a yoke-breaking anointing that I want you, the Lord is telling you to pray. I will pray over you. But you gotta, you got you to gotta know in the Bible when it talks about this. you got to be fully convinced that wherever you go, yokes will be broken over people. Come on up. Come on up, sweetheart. Come on. Are you connected with us in any way, Warrior Notes, or you just, did you just come? I actually joined the class just recently. Joined a class? Yeah. Okay. Um, I watch you kind of often. I, okay. I, I go to uh, 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 with Leroy Thompson. Oh, Leroy. Oh, yeah. Okay. Leroy Thompson. Yes, sir. All right. God bless. Okay. This is what the Lord is saying. When you were all sitting back there, I wasn't sure who was with you, but this gentleman for sure and you for sure, and I saw you too, but I'm just telling you that the, it's, it has to do with breaking the yoke, which means that... Is everybody listening? This is for everybody. I usually don't do this, but the Lord told me last week I can start doing this. Again, because I used to do this. But you have to get to the place where everywhere you go, you realize that yokes are going to break. That I actually hear them cracking wherever I go. You have to have that mentality that the devils, the devils are, are beginning to feel like they've got to go. And I'm telling you this because this is your ministry. It's yoke breaking. This is everybody's ministry, but the Lord is emphasizing them. And I'd like to find out more. So get their information and I'll find out what's going on here with this. But this is what God has called you to do. So realize that. And, and the Lord said that, that I'm going to go before you, but I've got to be on you first. I've got to break yokes with you first, yes. and then I will go before you everywhere you go. But be mindful that the devils must go and that there's not going to be any show. And they're going to say, oh, no. <laughs> Amen. I love you all. Here, I'll pray. Let me pray. Let me pray. Thank you, Father. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Lord, just put it on him, Lord. Thank you. Yeah, the Thank whirlwind you. of your spirit, the holy fire. Thank you. <laughs> Whoa. Thank you. We agree, Lord. Yoke break. Yes. 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 In the yes. name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. Father, have your way. Yes. Have your way. You <laughs> Okay, all right. There's a couple others, just real quick. Sir, you, yeah, you. Back here, back here, yeah, you. Yeah, you can come too, but it's this guy here for sure. You come too, just to show you that this is for everybody. This is what's so weird is we do this and we think, oh, that person got chosen. I'm trying to show you something. This is for everybody, but for some reason, everybody likes it when they're pulled out. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'll do it every now and then, but everybody, this is for everybody. Okay, it's the same thing with, with this guy. This guy, too. Um, I don't know. I've never seen you before. I don't know anything about. I don't know what I'm doing, actually. That's what's so exciting about it. But the, 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 same, the, the same thing is, is some things are caught. And you've got to get past this thing that, you know, you're going to prosper, but it's not going to be the way you think. It's going to come blindside you. Money's going to chase you down and tackle you. But, but health will come and tackle you. But the anointing will come from behind and tackle you because God's pursuing you. He's literally pursuing you. And that's what the Lord wants to say is, is that you've gone through a lot. I mean, I could look at you and it's a miracle that you're alive. That's all I know. It's a miracle that you're alive. But the Lord said what is behind all of this is that when the door opens for you to speak, you're going to speak from the authority because you're completely, you're completely fully convinced. But it was all, all the things that you had to go through. 
okay, which is, uh, is amazing. When I look at you, I, I can see that God has had his way with you, but it's not been fun. But the Lord is going to do something about it, and your reward is coming. No, but the only thing is, is, is your gift, the gift that you have is, is prophecy. So you, your, things stir within you, and then you need to preach it. You need to preach from the fire, and I, I feel like you already do anyway. But you got to preach from the Word. you got to, like, as a gift of, of a ball of fire inside of you, which is a whole message of 40 pages, but it's just burning, that burning, you got to be able to just translate that out into the air and you got to preach and this is what I would do I would just go in a street corner and start talking I'll go anywhere if I if I don't have a congregation I just I'll just find people you know if you're a bus driver they're trapped you know if they're you know in other words you just you just you just do that you just do that you got it well, let me share something with your man I'm going I'm in a meeting he told me come here you see, and you're going to call me up, speak the same thing. You're kidding. And then I got a... Uh, Did you hear what he said? Mm -hmm. Did you all hear that? Yeah, he got that paper there. He said, that seed, he said, get that seed put in your hand from the old school, take that, I know from that, and come here. Sit in the back. Don't even try to come up front. I'm going to call you up here. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Thank you. So this is, this, this is what the Lord told you to do. Okay. Thank you. Are you from the area? I'm from A Meat. I'm from A Meat. And, and the, the, the mound is on me for the nation for violent crime. The culture, right, very much needed. Right, he said, "I got the person, go there." Wow. Well, well, talk to Ryan then, please. Okay, all right, we'll get his information. All right, with you, <laughs> Father, I just thank you so much. Everything, Lord, that he's gone through is going to be released right now in the name of Jesus. Yeah, it's time, and the Lord's going to do it. <laughs> thank you, Father. Father, I just thank you, Lord, that healing shall flow in his body and then it shall flow to others. And that the devil's going to wish that he never, ever touched him. In the name of Jesus. You guys, come up here. Yeah. Just, just pray over him. Just pray over him. I would not be here if you had not come back. Thank you so much. For You're welcome. Back. I want you to get connected. I just I feel like God's going to use you. No, go ahead. Yes, Lord. We thank you for the freedom that we're walking in. We thank you, Lord, that you chose us. We didn't choose you, Lord. We thank you for the light that shines that casts out all darkness. We walk by faith, Lord, not by sight. We are your humble servants, and we are here just to glorify you, Lord. And we thank you for this man of God right here who's having yokes broken and chains falling yes. from him right now, Lord. Open up heaven and send your angels to bless him, Lord. Walk with him and his family and his children. May the prodigals return. Show him his authority. Show him that he will be going from victory to victory, glory to glory, that it's already been done by what you did on Calvary's cross, Lord. In <laughs> Jesus' name we pray. We thank you. Amen. 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 All right. This, this is amazing. All right. So just remember, just remember one thing, that there in heaven, I saw that everything on the earth is supposed to belong to the church. So you got to remember that. That's where I'm coming from. You got to remember that someone else has your 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 provision. It's in the wrong hands. This is what I know. But I just want you to walk out here knowing that it's going to be authority, walking in authority that brings 
what is yours to you. It's not always just the giving. It's the receiving. The Lord is telling me to tell this because it's earmarked for you. I saw that all things in heaven were earmarked and that they must come to you. So this is what I, this, I don't pray for money. I command it to come to me. Why? Because it is already designated for the kingdom. It's not for me. God trusts us, but he trusts you too. If he commanded to come to you, but know that he's going to require you to put it into place where it's supposed to go, whatever that is, and you're still going to pay your bills. But there's the same thing with everything. Everything is set at the table of the Lord. I'm telling you by the power of God, your healing must come to you. It must. This is the Kevin that came back from heaven. Is It's all about authority. These things must happen in Lafayette. It must happen. The Word of God must go forth. There must be congregations in this city where people can feel safe. And people will learn about their value in God. Come on now. Come on now. They'll have to big a, build a bigger runway. Come on. Amen. Let's just do it. Let's just say this, okay? Let's just be bold. Say it, say it with me, because this is what I say. I just, I'm not going to be bashful anymore. Everybody thinks I'm crazy anyway. Let's, I'm, I'm telling you, what I say is everything that is mine, Lord, it has to come to me. I, I, I'm not asking amiss. I'm just saying whatever has my name on it that God planned for me is coming to me. It is unlimited supply. I will live as long as he chooses for me to live. I will be able. I will be able. Think about this. Is the best, the most accurate prophet that I know. I have never called him to ask for a word. All the other major ministers he can name, they call him because he is so accurate. I have never asked him for a word. But the words that he has given me are so powerful. But this is the one thing. The Lord said, none of these ministers will pay off his house, so I want you to pay off his house. And I want you to do it with your own money. I paid off his house when all these other powerful ministers could have done it. From their pocket change. Kathy and I, we did it for him. I'm only saying this because it might be you that makes the difference in somebody's life. That guy wept on the phone. When we called the bank because we had to transfer it from our bank to his bank. We had to have all those routing numbers and everything. The, the, it was at Christmas time, and the worst time, it was during the worst time of that disease, where everybody's defaulting. That lady on the phone from the bank started crying. She goes, no one does this. We're having defaults, and you're paying off this guy's house? I go, yeah, isn't it exciting? And she's like, what? Okay, we... What I'm trying to tell you is, is God always earmarked that money for him. It was always his, even though it was in our account. That's what I'm trying to tell you, is God can do anything he wants, anytime he wants, with whoever he wants. But today, a prophet who ministered alongside all the greats, after 43 years, he finally got his house paid off. Amen? Amen. But it was... But it, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't the way that you would think. Do you get it? Okay. That's it for tonight. I love you.
I've called Chick-fil-A. They're going to stay open until tomorrow. <laughs> Is that good? Cause 